Lackey, he's in, stops up, backhand, and he scores! Uh, I was screaming when I scored the goal. How are you feeling? I'm ecstatic. And welcome to the finals of the 2023 IIHF E World Championship presented by our amazing sponsors in Skoda and Strauss. My name is Brandon Bigsby and the man to my right joining us for the finals, Anthony Scabilia, better known to you guys as Grizz Goal. And Grizz, glad to have you today. And boy, did you choose a great time to come in. Our finals between Finland versus Canada. And man, oh man, this is one of those series I think everyone's been waiting on to see. Oh, man, it's one of the best tournaments all year long. You get the Europeans playing the North, the North Americans, 150 ping. What can happen? We've seen some absolutely insane games happen so far. Nothing better than here right now during the finals. Yeah, we've seen some crazy games, especially in the latter half of yesterday, but we'll get to that in a little bit. But let's give you a quick look at our matchup screen between Finland versus Canada. On the Finland side, we have Yessi L and Eki. Well, for Team Canada, we have Cad and Regs. And I mean, Grizz, obviously, we know what Cad and Regs can do on that right side with those two players having that history. It's going to be a lot of fun to see how they match up against the back-to-back -back champions in Finland looking to get that three-peat. Absolutely right. And for Finland, I mean, yes, he's been a good compliment to Eki and it really is a team game. And for Yessi, hey, do your job. Let Eki do what Eki does and you're going to be off in, in a good spot. On the other side, same thing for Regs. I mean, you have Regs and Eki. You know, you could probably say they're the two best players in the world. I, I think we've kind of beaten that one to death at this point. And then for Cat as well, you know, do your job. And I think it's going to come down to that secondary matchup to see really how this thing shakes out and who takes the uh, who takes the crown here. Yeah, and you talked about Cad a little bit, kind of pairing with Regs. Remember, Regs, he was in this tournament last year with Safir, was knocked out in the corner finals by Team Czechia. He's made it very apparent he wants to see Team Canada get that goal. This is the one tournament that's not just eluded him, but has eluded this country as well. Canada yet to win in this tournament. And let's take a little bit of a look at his partner in Cad, representing on the PlayStation side, his first time in this tournament, a guy that has had a lot of success on the Sixes side, a little bit of success on on the 1v1 side, still looking for that one big marquee championship, Grizz. Maybe today could be his day. Well, he, he has some success beating some of the Europeans. If you go back to the Bolts Shell Challenge a couple of years back, official pro player for Caps Gaming as well, has much success in both sixes and the 1v1 space. As I mentioned, a good compliment to his partner in regs. Yeah, did win that both challenge last year, and it's going to be interesting because one of the players that he had to go through is on the other side, and Eki won't be playing against him with Eki being on the Xbox side, but who will be playing against them is Cad's teammate in regs, and I mean... This is the matchup that I think everyone's really going to be watching out for. It's going to be in games two and four. Eki and Rex, plenty familiar with each other. And how fortunate are we to see them match up, not just in the finals, but representing their country as well. Absolutely right. I mentioned, you know, one of the best tournaments of the year. This is a huge reason why. The best players in Europe finally get to play the best players in North America. And for North America, that is certainly Regs. He won the 2022 NHL Gaming World Championships. In North America, 2020 NHL Gaming World Championship for Team Can or for the Canadian Regionals, 2023 Bolts Shell Champion. We saw him have success there as well. Unofficially, also beat Eki on land this year as well, and 6v6 player for Isles GT as well as an official player for Lazarus. An absolutely stacked player bio for Regs. Yeah, I mean, there's not many players more accomplished than Regs. And like we mentioned, this is the one tournament that he really hasn't won yet, whether it be on the 1v1 side or the 6v6 side. And we'll take a quick look at how Canada get, get themselves here on their journey to their first ever IIHF E World Championship. Let's take a quick look back at how they got to this point where they are today. The stoppage, yeah, that's the shot on that save. By Dutch Belka and Cass still holding on. He's bumped. The cross pass him back and he scores. What a pretty passing play by Cat with less than a minute to play. A two goal advantage and that goal right there may have just put the icing on the cake. Kirchy trying to hold on. Gives him a little up for the hurdle. Holds it, tries to pass it on the scratch. He passes across. He scores. Hurdle makes it a two goal advantage. Team Checky a field it. Kirchy calm, cool, and collective. 
front and half me feeling it as well. Here you got a team differential the other way, and it's just dominant, so. And another one. Double digits now for Regs. 10 to nothing advantage. 16 to 7 on the aggregate. I mean, he's scoring so much, I honestly genuinely don't know what else to say. And it is literally my job to say things. And it's kind of funny because that is his play style. He gets right up on the camera. I've watched him for years do it. This is just the way he plays. As he look at look at the reaction from Regs every time he scores. I mean, he's feeling it. He's buzzing, and this is the physical depiction of when they say the boys are buzzing. Regs is buzzing. Acosta on the power play, but Regs on the power kill. Oh, he gets that pass across the bar as well. And I mean, I said it once, I'll say it again. He scores. Back-to-back -back games, he puts up double digits. Regs with one of the dominant performances that we have seen in IIHF e World Championship history. You see what Canada was able to do to get here. Grizz, they've been dominant all tournament long. They got their way through Czechia. They got their way through Germany. But now the biggest challenge yet in Team Finland. And if you weren't with us yesterday, Finland got here by miraculous circumstances. They were down 16 to nine in game four. One game to play, it was Eki versus Cookie. And Eki, miraculously enough, puts up eight goals, gets his way in. And Nienik talked to him in the interview and he was like borderline speechless, which for Eki, pretty tough to do. Always a really fun interview. And he actually even went, after the game and had some comments about that. You see the tweet right there on your screen. Finals day. Yesterday was nuts. The most absurd and best NHL game I've ever played. Could barely sleep because of the adrenaline, but that's in the past. Now it's time to bring Poika to Finland. Grizz, you know what they say, the old Kobe Bryant expression? Jobs not finished yet. That is exactly the mentality that Eki has with us despite everything that happened yesterday. Jobs not done and don't poke the bear. We know that Eki has not not struggled, but has struggled to meet his own performance goals this year. Uh, maybe not coming out on top of every event that he plays in like we typically see him able to do. So now that he's had kind of maybe getting that fire back, like I said, he's had those those struggles defensively. He's been very adamant about getting back to his game. I think a win like that could remind him of why he does this and why he's so good at it. I'm very excited to see what he's able to do against Rags today. Yeah, let's take a quick look at Eki's bio. You mentioned how accomplished he is, and he's going to be facing off against Rag. Let's actually take a look at Yessi first in his teammate. Yessi, a guy that is new to this tournament, maybe a little bit newer to the mainstream 1v1 scene, but has been rather impressive and has been doing his job so far. Yeah, and he defeated Artuzio to claim that second spot for old Gen alongside Eki, and maybe the hero in the quarterfinals. Uh, he was able to defeat Dirty Dangler from Germany, who last year we saw really have a great showing. So again, it's about complimenting your partner on both sides. Obviously, you have Eki, one of the best players in the world, but you still have to do your job because you can cost your teammate if you don't hold up your side of the bargain. We saw Yessi able to do that here so far. It's a big reason why they're able to make it to the finals. And now we'll go over and take a look at his teammate in Eki, who, as we mentioned, does have that illustrious career. Back-to-back -back champion for Finland in this tournament in 2020 and 2022. Won MVP both years. He wants to go ahead and secure that third, but it's going to be against arguably the toughest competition he's had yet so far. Yeah, he needs no introduction. Four-time NHL GWC champion, including last year as well. 2018 world champion. And it was able to defeat 2019 world champion Cookie yesterday as well in that just absolute blowout. I mean, he needed seven. He went and got eight. He said, don't mind if I do. We are not done. And of course, the back to back e world championships as well with two different partners. Yeah, with two different partners, and now with Yessi being his third, and Grizz, you mentioned that comeback, I mentioned that comeback, but for those that weren't with us yesterday, we're going to do you a favor, let's take it all the way back to that comeback, relive it, and see how Finland got themselves to this point to make their third straight IIHF E-World Championship Final. Let's do it. Exactly right. It's Dodds now. Right around behind the net and scores! The wraparound we saw last week, he does it again here. And a great goal there to get that three goal lead extended. That is why it kind of adds in that extra element to the season. Off the post and in off the one-timer. 
Cookie is fired up, and it's now 10 to 5 for the U.S. Americans. Had cooks, but Cookie bakes. One more chance here. Three seconds left. Slaps off in the and he scores those goals are so huge when you get them at the end of the period and Dodds puts it in at the perfect time with just 1.9 remaining holding Eki far side scores the mistakes are being capitalized by the Finns right now the four on screen now and it's getting close if you're Team Finland the goaltender's not positioned and now one goal step right to oh he it up The series is tied. Eki doing the unthinkable for his country, for his pride, and for his teammate. Can he do it again? And he does. The lead for Eki. It is with the Finns. They have a one goal aggregate lead with 10 to play here in the third. This is unbelievable. And uh, that's like, that, that's the best game I've ever played. And I know we just saw the replay, but I still cannot fathom that that actually happened. As we're going to go ahead and bring it into the four box. Our two casters for this game, two of the best in the business, Nick DeMeo, Cameron Halbert, and Nick Cam. How exciting is this series going to be? We saw how these two teams got here. Four amazing players, four of the best in the world, and it all culminates to this championship series right here today. Yeah, Cam, I'll, I'll let you give your thoughts here your first time on this broadcast this year joining in at the height the climax of this final series Eki back in it regs ready to win it what do you think man man first of all great job guys throughout the tournament this is one of the uh, more fun tournaments to watch in the nhl esports space i love the format <clears throat> i think it makes it one of the most exciting uh, because the aggregate, you got to have you, your teammate has to perform as well. And uh, I, I've been involved in the tournament since its inception. So this is the third year now. And that game I was watching last uh, yesterday between Eki and Cookie, that was probably the most stunning finish in an esports tournament game that I've seen over my four years of being involved in NHL esports. Uh, absolutely nuts. And uh, we're in for a great final between. Well, I mean, the highlights, obviously, with Eki and Regs at the top, but it's going to be really fun to see how uh, their partners also are integrated in this. Yeah, we got Yessi and Cad to start things off. PlayStation side first, Xbox side after. I'm going to turn it over to Grizz real quick. Uh, Grizz, your final thoughts here as we get ready for matchup number one. Two newcomers to this big tournament that you were also a part of last year. What do you think Cad has to do playing in what could be the the uh, underdog position, at least on paper for the team overall, to get an early start here against Team Finland. Well, for CAD, it's all about playing fast. Start out heavy and lay your foot down on the gas pedal. Go for the throat. Let's do this thing. So let's do this thing. I mean, we're going to talk to you guys in a little bit then. We're going to jump down to rinkside and get it in now. It's game time. We're ready. I hope you're ready as well. And here we go. No sleeves. Penguin here for the coverage. The IIHF E-World Championship for 2023 is underway. As the player cams on your screen are up, you see the matchup graphics below. Game one of four in aggregate. We'll talk about aggregate as we get through the series, but an early start here. Big, big first goal for Yessi. And something that we do need to mention is because of the format and, and how the teams line up in terms of overall, Canada will be used by Finland. Canada, the actual team Regs and CAD, had already used Team Canada, so they are using Czechia, which is a big team advantage and something that we definitely need to bring up but it's going to make it that much more difficult for Canada to stay in this one. But a fantastic start for Yessi, who's going up against one of the best Canadians in CAD. Yeah, that was a lightning fast start. One shot, one goal before we can even say it. Here's a second one. Yessi now counting on camera cam. <laughs> He's learned from his buddy that he wants to make sure that everyone understands math and, and counting. It comes correct here. And that's two within the first three minutes. And CAD has got to get to work. He's got to get the puck. 
he's got to get the puck at, and and at least try to stop uh, stop this barrage from happening. Like shot out of a cannon, Yessi stepping up for Team Finland here in the finals, trying to make the dynasty, the trifecta, go back to back to back. They want the boat parade and a wraparound chance there. Finally, Cad getting it with Pasternak, taking it down the right side of your screen now. Verona in the attacking zone. Looking for a shot, no, thinks better of it. Lays it into front of the goalie, and that will be denied quickly. Yes, he just moves it right back through center. Three on, shot in, good save. Vimelka holds on, and we will have a draw not from center ice camp. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Cad's got to make sure that he just settles in that Ross rush, a, a good sense. He's got to use the players that are, are in the higher overalls to his advantage with Pasternak, so a good to see him take advantage of that line early on and see if he can get the next one here to get back into the series. Drake said the big thing, Czechia, controlled by Canada, needs to do is make Finland work all four lines with Canada. They feel, Regs does, that the stronger two lines are with Czechia. That puck, puck goes off the post as a good effort rings off the iron. The regs, maybe that strategy has to come into play as things have finally slowed down for Cad. Now he's back on defense, looking to take the puck back away from the man who likes to set up from that corner area in Jesse L. PlayStation side, game one of four. This is an aggregate series. All the goals matter. We talk about game management a lot. And that's going to come into play here, but the one-time pass across and shot in. It is three unanswered goals for Team Finland here in the finals. Things are going from bad to worse, and you have to think of how this series is going to play out. Before we were we were able to get into this series, something I wanted to bring up is I thought that this was going to have to be uh, where a lot of the heavy lifting from Team Canada would be is Cat again, one of the better players, not just in Canada, but in the world. Uh, again, the next series, you'd have to think, is not going to be a blowout either way for Regs or Eki. But the fact that Regs has got to use, obviously, a team disadvantage here is going to make it that much more difficult for him. But you'd have to think that he's not going to be able to bring them all the way back if they trail by you know four or five goals. So this is on Cad. He's got to keep it close, and we'll see what he can do coming up next. Yeah, keeping it close is the big thing. We learned that last year, you and I in the finals, as we saw a synchronous OT between Finland and the U.S. So here comes Cad now. Puts one in front, bounces off the goalie and in. There's the first strike for Team Canada. They're on the board here in the finals. That's huge. Now, if Cad can come back and, and stop the bleeding, like I said, it, it's going to be big. It, it, one of the biggest and most important things here is to go into the series or the next game with Regs and Eki and make it close. Two goals would I, I would be probably the highest you want to be down if you're Canada, but this off the rush is going to be awfully difficult for def to defend as we've seen it already. Uh, a lot of two-on-ones for Yessi. Yeah, that off the rush is where the speed kills kind of when you talk about these offensive players for Team Canada. They will just overwhelm you with speed if you let them, especially controlled by really talented players on the finish side. But here's a good face-off win by Cad from his defensive end. He'll move it up halfway gone through period number one. Four goals scored, three of them for Finland right now. But a fourth is ready to go there, or at least a fifth, rather. A good save by the Finns. That's another chance there by Cad, and now he's starting to get it going. He's bumped off the puck, he'll lose it, but two good efforts there, back-to-back -back by Team Canada. Yes, he stops and turns. Right circle looking for a way in now. He's at the point. Drives in front. Goes back. Now controlling from the point area. Two men on him. Now he found a lane. Shot in there. Small. That was the Melka. And that was the third time now we saw Cam that yes, he's looking for that shot in that high slot area. No, good save there for Cad. Able to slow things down a little bit. He definitely looks like he's a lot more comfortable as the period went along. But he's, like I said, he's really got to slop the bleeding. And at least he's done that. Settling. Settling has to happen. Nerves are probably running up a little bit. And you can feel the, the ease happen there as looking for a shot by Cad. And that one kind of ricocheted back to another stick. And a good save there. Covering up the loose puck. Now we wonder when, when Yessi's nerves start to kick in as the game gets going. And I think the fact that there, you know that you have two kind of helps things ease them a little bit because you know one devastating game isn't the end of the of the tournament for you guys. But uh, we'll see as, you know, this is the first time that he's really been on this kind of a stage in 1v1. And again, going up against Team Canada, no easy feat regardless of the team advantage. So we'll see how he performs as the game goes along. Canada arguably the best team on paper. 
As he got one there, good pass across. And the pasta puts it in the net. We're closing in on that lead. It's now three to two. What a puck protect there by Cad to hold him off. And in the far side, able to slam that one home. And now he's back within one and things are starting to get a little bit more interesting already. Chris shot rebound there, almost led to an own goal. And yeah, that puck protect, it's the minor things, Cam, that I'm sure you can talk about as we get later in the series. Those things make all the difference in this contest. Well, I think one thing that Cat is so good at is, is half spins and the, and the L trigger. But the problem is, is that when you're playing on, you know, 100 ping, it's a little bit more difficult to do that. So protecting the puck and driving wide and playing a little bit slower in the offensive zone is definitely probably the way to go for Cat. And I would have to think that that's what we're going to see a lot more of as he tries to bring it into the middle. I talked to Regs uh, last week and he said, you know, he likes playing P to P, even though the ping's worse, he likes the feel of it better. And that takes a little bit of an adjustment, I'd imagine, if you're a competitive player working on a different feel of the game on this type of setup. As time winds down here. We'll get a penalty, though. Yeah, we got a penalty that came up on the back of that. But nevertheless, 3-2 your scoreline at the end of one. Team Finland in control, but Cad coming back. Oh, a crazy start there for Finland. Yes, he jumps out to the huge lead, but Cad slowly but surely battling back. Reg's in the chat. You've got to say, he says it right there, two or less. That's what we need. And again, I think that's going to be super important. So now it's on Yessi to see if he can give Eki just a little bit more help as we know the aggregate score comes into play as the series goes along. Yes, it does. Game management. You hear that a lot because it really is true. You can't give up two consecutive goals back to back. You can't give up the easy goal late in the game. You got to play all four quarters, if you will, of this four game series. As that one's our cross and another one time chance, a spin around from the left side and this series is tied. There goes the lead as Cad battles all the way back and now it's all Canada here. And now we've got a whole other scenario because again, with that player or that team advantage, and again, I, I don't want to take the focus away from our two competitors right now, but you know that Eki and Regs are coming up and they don't like losing in general, but they especially don't like losing to each other as Regs was able to take the land battle between these two earlier in the year. We'll see what happens online, but a great battle back from CAD to make this a game. As you saw another effort right there as he just danced his way into the high uh, the slot area, the high danger area. He tried to put one on short side, but is he able to keep that away for now? Long stretch pass, got some room now. The PlayStation player for Team Canada in CAD. Turned back into the middle, lost it for a second, has it back. Now he'll elskate a bit, stops. Working from behind the net. Things are slowing down a little bit. That's looking to favor the Canadian player on the ice as he gets bumped off the puck. Two on the right side for the Finns as they come into the zone now. Working with it, lays it across, backhand chance, he scores! Batherson brings the lead back to one for Team Finland. You see the reaction from Cat as that one was a little suspect, able to get a, a backhand one-timer, it looks like. Yeah. But nonetheless, we were what, what you were talking about there, I think that the slow play definitely favors uh, Cad and Czechia, just because, again, the overalls, you know, the, the difference in speed is where you're going to see the big advantage. When things slow down, it's all about positioning and, and mechanics of the game, and Cad is one of the best at it. So I think that Jesse, or yes, he's got to try and make sure that he goes end-to-end -end more because most of his goals have all come off the rush, just like that last one. That rush play working at least for those top two lines. Could Regs be right in those third and fourth is where Cad is capitalizing. Have to see here is that one's left in the middle. Out comes with it is the defense for Team Canada. Controlling Team Czechia on the ice. Those overalls could be a difference maker as we get later into these periods. But now, yes, he's got it. Spins in the left circle. Tries to lay one over there, and that one's pushed aside. Good effort. But they come back down the ice. Back and forth we go here. Dangles one. That one's stick checked away by the goalkeeper stick. It didn't find its intended recipient. Intercepted there at the blue line. They'll come back in quickly. But not before being met by the defender for Yesiel. First timer here in the IIHF E-World Championship. He looks to make his mark here in the finals. Now into the zone. Let that pass off, but 
quickly picked off by Cad. They'll go for a line change. Fresh legs out except for one player. Forecheck really high up there. Boriessi right now as he tried to steal that one off the change. Good move. But it didn't pay off yet so far. Yes, he spins his way back in. Good moves there. Lays one out and scores. Five hole from the pass from the low angle. Great play there by Yessi. And now he regains that two goal lead. Momentum swung back in his favor. That's huge. And like I said, the, the aggregate is really going to come into play. I'm so curious to see how the next game in the series goes. Not to get ahead of ourselves here, but that two goal lead now back for Finland is huge. Back to two. And the pendulum keeps turning. Will it turn in favor of Cat as that one is just trickling on? It bounced off the pad of the goalkeeper. That was one of the most dangerous opportunities, but there he goes tucking it in. The pressure just mounting right now. You could feel it as the Finns go back up by three. And there's another one able to get that one home. As the shot comes in, and it's just a bad clear. And again, the ping is obviously going to be an issue, but that's a great feed across. And now a three-goal lead again. What crazy swings. We've had three separate three-goal leads or swings Wild. already in this. Yeah, if, if that's any indication of what we're going to see for this afternoon or evening, depending on where you are, there's a backhand chance there. goes just wide. And yes, he's able to get it out of harm's way. Pad is starting to cook again. And you were right. If we, we just feel it. Three unanswered, three unanswered, three unanswered. They're going back and forth. Can Cad do it again? Closing out the second period. Is he back on offense, though? As he brings it off the post. Top cheese Dubois. This is now the first four-goal lead of the series. Big, big goal there as Cad, yeah, definitely struggling on the defensive side of things as he lets that shot free in the slot and picks it top corner. And again, with a lower overall goaltender, it's going to be awfully difficult, but... He's really got to start forcing him to the outside. Got to keep the play to the outside. Yes, he likes to set up out there, but he takes his chances. Rebound chance there. He took another one, but finally able to smother that one. No throwing it out today, Cam. We saw that right there. He holds on. No, I think he's going to learn from that, especially on higher ping. Face off out to the right of Vimelka. 244 here to go in the second period of game number one of four. Face off one back. Nice for Cad to move that out of his zone. During the neutral zone with some speed up the right side now. Into the top of the right circle. Trying to drive back in low. It's bump, still keeps it. Laid out in front and a good open net there. Just laced it across the front of the mouth of the goal for a goal. Huge, huge goal there for Cad late in the period to get back within three. Now the goals that come early or late in the periods seem to be momentum shifters so far in this tournament. Could that be the spark that Cad needs? As we are closing out the second period right now. Maybe one late would be massive too, but to get that one, at least it's three. And again, you saw Regs in the chat there say two or less. And he's got a chance. We'll see. He's got time for one more. Maybe he forces that one in, but that looks like how the second period's gonna end. And what an answer back from Yessi. Seven to four. Your score line with 20 minutes to go in game number one, Cam. What is it now for Cad to do? I mean, he's got to stop the rush, but the problem is, is that on international ice, there's so much more room. So it's very, very difficult. I think what he's got to do is that when he gets into the offensive zone, hold it for a very long time, almost play defense via offense, and only take those shots when you know that they're going to go in, like he's been doing in terms of the, the far side cross crease goals. But when he gets, when he lets up the rush, it's just so hard to stop, as we see it right there. As another goal, there's just so much more speed for the for the Team Canada. That first line speed going to work there. And a four goal lead back in for the Finns as he just raced down the left side, Ken. A, a big, big, a big, big goal there. And again, we'll, we'll have to wait and see how the next one's going to go. But, you know, Eki going in knowing that not only does Regs have to beat him, but he's going to have to beat him by a lot with a significant team advantage. This would be one of Reg's and, and Cad's really biggest, you know, NHL eSports upsets, in my opinion, from what they've done so far in a finals. We'll, we'll see if that upset can happen or if 
The pressure gets sustained either way. We have four games to play, and I'm not discrediting anybody now at this juncture with what we saw yesterday right here on the broadcast that got Finland here to begin with. Could the turntables turn, as Michael Scott says? And we see that happen with the Canadians. We're still early on. Only five gone so far here in the third period of game one. Messi trying to find that pass to the low angle. Now on the right side he does. And he bangs it home. Not many times you're going to see Cad give up nine in a game. Yes, he's got to keep the gas pedal down here and don't allow any. And a five goal advantage going into the next game is huge. Now we talked about that yesterday, Cam, between... Yesi and Dodds. Dodds won that match number three of four, five to three. We said, you got to keep putting the gas pedal down. There was good reason for that, as we saw. Same thing here if you're Yesiel, right? Yeah, absolutely. He's got to make sure he doesn't give up a few. Because even when you think, like, if he were to just give up two or three goals here late in the game itself, it doesn't matter because he's going to win more than likely. I mean, this would be a, an epic collapse. But here's a break already and again, and it's... Jesse in once more, and a huge save. <laughs> That's the one that doesn't go. That's the one that doesn't go. He's able to make that save. The goalkeeper coming up big for Team Canada. As now Jesse sitting up behind the net. We haven't seen that yet as it trickles in. He's getting all the breaks right now in this opening game of the series. This is tough because now, no matter what, like I wouldn't expect the next game to go like this but now he's going to have to have one. This is almost the reverse script of what happened to Finland in the semifinals against Team USA. It is. It is. As we have the Xbox side coming up in a little bit. Eki versus Regs one more time. As the play will be stopped. Something weird happened there. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened on that stoppage. So we'll set up here in the Defensive end for the Finns. Face off one back by Cad. Right point. Drives in the center point. Lays it off to the left side. Brings that down for Hurdle. He'll get pushed. Keeps it. Not down low. Pasta. Got it. Two defenders on him. Dangles around both. Good control there. Like the mechanics you mentioned earlier on. Hurdle. Shot there for Ana. That goes wide. Good save. Pressure now mounting. Offense. Defense via offense, as you mentioned. That was a good sustained pressure by Cad here late in the third period. Yes, he's got it back now. He likes to set up behind the net, too. We saw a lot of that in the quarterfinal matchup between him and Dirty Dangler against Team Germany. This is what he usually likes to do. So that rush play, didn't see a lot of that last night, and we're seeing it here today. Maybe going back to what he knows a little bit now that things have slowed down. He's up by six. But he forces it in and finds that low angle behind the net to the right side, one T. Seven goal lead for the Finns. Yeah, this is a brutal finish here. I don't know how, but we've got, you know, regs. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> you know, you got to break it down game by game. So if you keep the score line the way it is right now and regs wins maybe, let's say, by three, and then you manage the next game, and then you win by... It's hard, but I'm not ruling it out, Cam. No, absolutely not. I just think when, when you, all things considered, just beating Raki, obviously very difficult, uh, no matter what. But now you got to beat him by a lot. I think, man, I, Cad needs a goal or two here to end it. He does. That line item you said, two or less. That really is the magic there, but... Yessi not letting it happen as he continues to pour it on in the opening frame of the four-game aggregate. Yes, yeah, like this is the this is the brutal part too, and like in, in how this game is set. Like even when you're when you're losing and you're gonna lose a game, you just have to keep it close. And this is definitely not Cad's best game, but the issue is is that he just he's not making any adjustments defensively. I mean, yes, he scored the same goal quite a few times and. Like, a loss is a loss for sure, but a, a loss at 12 to 4 is a lot different than a loss of even 8 to 5 or 8 to 4. So, uh, very, very difficult. Very, very difficult. As we are winding down the first game here with a lot to take away, eyes will be pointing ahead, but there it goes again. 
He's not stopping it. I mean, good for him. I mean, he's making it very easy on himself and, and Aki uh, as the series goes around. I don't think anyone saw this coming. No, not on paper with what we saw last week and yesterday that got us to the dance. A 13th goal performance here. And ironically, Cam, yesterday, Czechia was playing as Czechia. Canada played as Canada. And, I mean, we look at the paper, 26 to nine was your aggregate score. We're seeing a little bit of the save here. I mean, they're just, he, like, it's very, very difficult. I, v Vimelka net in terms of ratings, because everything he's just throwing in the net. These aren't extremely pretty, but a 14, this has got to be a record. Uh, we're looking on paper right now. I have my notes in front of me. This is the largest goals for in one game of the knockout phase here in the IHFB World Championship in 2023. So you're right. And it ties Regs' is 10 to nothing goal deficit, at least for right now, against Pep Costa yesterday. So a 10 goal lead is the record. Will he break it to 11? He will! On cue. Huge. Like, this is wild. Again, I don't think you're going to see this uh, very often. But yeah, no mercy in this one. I mean, good for Yesiel. Like, again, because of the format, uh, brutal. I, I mean, I'm, I don't know what's going to happen in the Regs and Eki game, but you got to think that I don't want to say anything's over after yesterday, but my goodness. Is there a park the bus mode in NHL? Because I think that's needed right now to slow this down. This got out of hand, 15 to four, your final score. I mean, for Cat, he just needs out of that game. Uh, you know, 15 goals on 23 shots, that's brutal. And like I said, not all, uh, not all of them were of the incredible variety, but uh, yeah, absolutely brutal. Game number one, we knew it was gonna be difficult for Canada with that uh, disadvantage in terms of the team makeup, but circumstances as they are, um, you know, uh, they, they've got to use Czechia in this. And I think B major said it best in the chat. We need, uh, we need EA to come up with a, a competitive format in terms of teams where we could use, you know, 85 overalls across the board. I think that would be the best, uh, but brutal start for Canada. We'll see what happens is you see the 111 ping there. Yeah. So let's do this. Let's send it back to the studio for some thoughts here from Grizz and B major. Well, that was definitely interesting. B major, Grizz to my right. And I mean, Grizz, I'll, I'll let you take the baton first. I mean, how do you kind of encapsulate everything just happened? 15 goals and now Canada in a monstrous hole to try to climb themselves out of. So it was a little bit of a mix of a couple things. The team advantage, obviously, when you have a free shot in the slot and it goes in every time you flick up, that's the team advantage. What's not the team advantage is running for the hits, missing the bumps, giving up the slot easily, not protecting or defending behind the net, leaving guys open back door. Cad showed that he could score, showed composure early, and then the wheels fell off the wagon. It was 3 nothing, Yessi. Then it was 3-3 Cad. Then it was 6-3 Yessi, and Yessi just took off from there. I mean, you, you have to, in this, in this tournament, if you want to win, it's about stopping the bleeding. You can lose. Yessi lost both games in the semifinals, Heck, Finland lost three of the four games, but it didn't matter because of the last game. This is a little different. I mean, we're talking a massive, massive goal scoring effort. And CAD was never able to just slow the game down and stop the bleeding. I mean, it, uh, good for Yessi. That was unbelievable. Yeah, and I mean, if you want to stat, I mean, Yessi in the two games versus Dodzi yesterday scored six goals. He scored 15 in that game alone. You do not see something like that. And I know there's a lot of chat going on in the chat talking about the format and things of that nature, but I think something that is big to remember is obviously there isn't that competitive mode, and this is where that strategy often comes in. You know, Reg said yesterday the reason they had to choose Team Canada was because they weren't really sure if Cat was going to make it or not. A bit of an unfortunate circumstance there, but we also heard Reg say, hey, we feel that Czechia is the second best team. So 
it felt like they could hold their own before this. To me, I don't really think that that changes just because of that first result. Don't get me wrong. The overalls do mean something, but I don't think you can throw away what we just saw Yes, he do because of the overall difference. And that's no disrespect to Cat or anyone else's opinions, but I do think it is kind of important to precursor that. So I do want to mention uh, there's a lot of questions in chat about why Canada had picked Canada yesterday. Cad had a flight scheduled. He was not supposed to be here. They felt like that was the only opportunity for them to make themselves competitive enough to make the final. So they knew that they would be up against it if they made it here. They made that choice, and then Cad's flight got delayed. So a little bit of fortunate and unfortunate circumstances both led to that because Cad, fortunately, Cad was able to play. Unfortunately, they had picked Canada thinking that he couldn't play. That's why they picked Canada. You saw a lot of that in the last game. I mentioned a lot of those bumps that he just, yes, he absorbed nearly every bump. He would go into spins, stopping the bump, absorbing the bump, and then sending that pass across to an undefended player back door. And Cad never adjusted to that. He needs to realize that, hey, I could have stopped the bleeding. I could have used my stick a little more and tried that. But yeah, I mean, you have to adjust. And now Regs is up against a wall. We'll take a quick look at the live standings as that result just came in. And you see it right there, 15 to four, Yessi doing his job and then some. And, you know, we got to talk to Yessi a little bit. We didn't get to ask him, but he dropped both of those games yesterday. You kind of have to wonder if he came in today with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. I know there's everything with that team differential, but Cad, we talked about Cad earlier, Grizz, still one of the best players in the world. I don't care what team who was using. Putting up 15 goals is insanely impressive. And now it puts Regs in a situation where he has to do more than we saw Eki did yesterday. And that seemed rather impossible. Absolutely. Uh, you know, think the, the reason with, with this tournament, you're never out of it. 15 to four, obviously, is I think the greatest deficit that we've seen uh, in the knockout stage, at least. So things are going to be tough. And now it's not like Regs is playing an inferior opponent. He's playing an equal opponent in Aki again the top two players in the world I think that we can reasonably say that they are the number one and number two players in this game so we're gonna see about but it's probably not gonna be a blowout regs probably won't make up too much ground if he does win maybe by a couple of goals maximum uh so yeah I mean Cad's gonna have to really make up ground for his club to even give them a chance in his second game yeah, and I see Cad in chat. He's not really thrilled. He's not really happy with a few things. But, I mean, you have to remember, still one more game to play. And I know it's 11 goal deficit that's tough to come back from. But all you can do is control what you can control from this point forward. You can't do anything about that last game. You still have three more games to go. I mean, like we said, we did see Eki do it in one game. It's not the craziest thing to maybe see Canada do it in three. It would take a three or four goal advantage in each of those games. But, I mean, hey, we've seen crazier things happen i think yesterday is a great example of that absolutely right there's definitely a lot more to be played here it's why we play the game i mean you, you can call it after this game if you want but we're not gonna we're gonna play this thing out for sure and see where we land yeah, I mean, you even saw Kay say, congrats, Jesse, you're the best player I've played this year. So, I mean, you know, like I said, it's not one of those things to where the, the teams do make a difference, but I do think you have to give Jesse a ton of credit for how we how he played Is We'll get ready for game number two here in just a few moments. Regs for Canada, Eki on the the Finland side, and we talked about this in the pregame, Grizz. These are two players that are extremely familiar with each other, and as a matter of fact, just played each other on the land side of things just three months ago. Yeah, absolutely, and Regs did come out with that unofficial world championship victory. I think they got their eyes set on the real thing this year, later this year, but always a pleasure when we get to watch these caliber of players get to go head-to-head, -head. because it's not too often that we actually see that. Yes, yeah, we'll go ahead and bring it into the four box here in a moment. And, you know, it's going to be interesting to see this because now if you're Canada, it, it kind of changes the strategy a little bit. You know what you have to do. You're down by 11. You're kind of forced to change into that play style as we bring in Nick and Cam. And Nick, I'll start with you a little bit. You have those three games if you're Canada. How do you kind of manage that aggression knowing that you have time, but you have so much ground that you have to make up? You don't have a lot of time to talk about it as they're matching them now, but you've got to manage it. Eki's coming like a cannon right now, so we're going to see how that looks like today. We got to get down to it, guys, so we're going to talk to you on the back half of this one as we go into halftime, but game's starting now, Cam, so let's do this. Let's go. They jumped in 
They said it'll be a minute, and then they said, nope, we're searching now. So here we go. Game number two, and I don't know what you say here, but if anybody can do it, I said it yesterday for Eki, down by nine, or eight there. Seven, seven, needed seven, got eight. Uh, if anyone can do it for 11, I, I'm gonna put my money on regs if it's possible. You're gonna get the best game possible out of regs here, so this will actually be pretty fun. And there's one! Okay! One, there it is. So regs gets the opening shot across the bow, and he's not going to go quietly into that good night, sir. Absolutely not. Like I said, we don't see this very often where Regs has to absolutely go demon mode. And uh, it's going to be against Eki. And uh, I mean, to, you have to you have to know that Eki does not like the fact that Regs beat him on land in New York back in December. So he's looking for some retribution for sure. Retribution, pride, the trifecta for Regs. Getting the one championship he's not gotten yet. The laundry list of championships that he's won is a plenty. Is missing this one on his trophy case. Can he accomplish that here? Down by a ton. As a shot there comes in. That was a backhand up and over almost the pads. As right now, Regs is doing it. But can Eki do it back? They'll hold on there. Again, not throwing it out. Smartest play I think I could say after what we saw yesterday. And I think this is big, not just for Eki and, and Yessi, but like the NA scene in, in competitive, not just 1v1, but 6s now, because NA has really dominated every time that they've had an NA and EU competition. And I think that like this is a good reminder that it's not like EU's any slouch. It's just, you know, uh, I, think, I know Eki takes this extremely seriously. So the rest of this series is going to be big, and I would love it if they could close the gap and make it a game, but... Good start so far for Regs. Got to start with one. They did so there. Can they make it two? But now Eki's setting up shop from that corner that he likes to build from, which is that low circle from the left. They send it up top now as the players move into position. Good poke check there by Regs. That'll clear the zone. Fresh legs coming out for about half of the players for Team Finland. Good movement. The architect here from Eki. Oh, looking for the backhand. Pulled it back, though. Now the one-time shot. Low angle, far side. That one's rejected by Vimelka. And here comes Regs on his third attack of the game. Can he convert this one? He'll go to the corner. Skate out of that. Stops again. Now fires one in. Good save off to the right side. Camp again. Down low. Chance. And that smothered in outside of the blue paint by Eki. We talked about in the in the first series the way that the, the team disadvantage between Czechia and Canada has to be played is by playing offense in the, or saying playing defense in the offense offensive zone. The one thing about Regs is that he controls time on attack almost better than almost every single other player, not just in EU but NA as well. So if, if there's one player that can kind of make up for it, and there's a second one, and all right, here we go. Here we go indeed. The rebound chance and the goal by Regs. Blows it, inching his way to try to level this thing out. I mean, if he wins six nothing, let's, you know, if what what do we what what do we feel is the necessary gap to be closed by to make this storyline a little bit? Like, what what do we feel? I feel like if he makes it a six goal differential, and he's down by five going into game three and four, that's manageable. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you gotta the deficit has to be. You can't go half, but anything a little bit closer uh, is better. I think, it, you know, win by four, I think that's probably where you got to be. You got a At lot of minimum. work ahead. At minimum, you're yeah. absolutely right. So with time winding down here in the first period, now Eki's going to work here, just tries to lay that one in. Somehow it didn't get stopped by the goaltender, and now Eki's going to look for that Low angle one T. That's what Yessi learned from, and he did that to get himself to the finals. We saw three goals by that late in the first game from him. Can Eki do it, or he'll go D to D here? He's just also buying time here, and this is pretty smart by Eki. We talk about managing yeah. the game. He's doing that right here. Yeah, absolutely. It's just like at the end of a game when you're up by one or two, he knows that if Regs can't get the puck back at least, and he, you know, cycles around in the offensive zone. If he kills 10 minutes of a period, you know, that's just as good because the, the lead is in, is almost insurmountable. 
Yeah, you don't need the goals. You just need to get through the game. So we might not see I, the I don't blame here. him either. Like, that's, you know, like that, again, you're going up against regs, so. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And we see that here from Eki. And I think more importantly, and I want to get your thoughts on this, you know, obviously Eki lost the unofficial in-person battle between them. But for him, I think it's more important that they win the championship, not win the game. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, if Eki doesn't want to, these guys, none of these guys at this stage want to lose. I mean, you can see it, like, Cad, Cad's not going to handle losing just like uh, Regs and Eki aren't going to handle it. Like, no one wants to lose, but at least they know that Eki, I know, wants the championship more than anything. As time winds down in the first period, scoreline 15 to 6 now, only down by 9. It's looking better than it was 20 minutes ago, Cam. No, absolutely. Better, but good start there for Regs, 2 0. And again, you see the time on attack. This is what Cad's got to do. Uh, if we're being honest, like th this is what this is what Cad's got to do is when he gets into the offensive zone, just hold on to the puck for a long time. The time on attack there, you see for for Eki, but I don't even think he was looking for anything offensively, as you mentioned. I think that he knows that his lead is just so is so big that if he just takes seven or eight minutes a period on one offensive cycle, even if he only gets one shot on, that he's completely okay with that. Yeah, I think you're right there. I think the tenacity is what happens when you're up against adversity. What, what happens, what does that say about your character to respond to things like this? I think says a lot about you, and I think we see good examples of that in guys like Eki, in guys like Regs, in guys like Cookie. Uh, so hopefully that can be exemplified across the board as we do have an uphill battle here again. No, absolutely. All right, nine goal differential. Nine goals. So... We'll see how that shakes out here as we do still have a game in, excuse me, in front of us. Still two periods to play in game number two. Still two games after this. The low angle shot there comes in. That one almost found its way to the back of the net. Reg's trying to get a little bit unorthodox with these efforts as the shot comes on and is deflected wide off the rebound. Picked up now by Eki. Stick checked away. Hurdle will bring it out for Reg's. Regs will bank that off the boards. Picked up now with some space. Two on one chance. Oh. Comes off the Dicks to save. Good chance there by Regs. Just missed. Goalie was able to come across. And Eki was able to take a shot there. and That one didn't connect either. The goalies are starting to step up a bit here. Gotta wonder what makes the goalies play a little bit different as the game progresses sometimes. As that was a good chance. Another effort there by Regs. As he's pouring on the scoring opportunities right now, Cam just couldn't close on those last two. Yeah, when he defends the rush, like this is what we didn't see in the in the CAD series, is that CAD was CAD was playing as if, you know, it, it was versus or hockey ultimate team with like close, close overalls and ratings. You saw him charge a lot off the rush. The second that Eki gets a puck, Regs is almost going backwards immediately to try and make sure that he's at least in position a little bit. And I think that Cad's got to do that in the next game as well. You win by two here. Uh, you, know, you got to win by four. I think four is the number. Four, yeah. That puts it to eight, down by seven. Then it, then you got a, a chance there. And we'll see how Cad can respond after that very uh, not expected performance in game number one is what we'll say. I would assume it's not going to be 15 to 4 in the next game. I would hope not. I, I, I don't think that has anything to do, uh, you know, we talked about it. Yeah, the overalls played a part, but there's a lot more to it that transpired later in that game. I mean, it was 3 to 3. It was 3 to 3. That's a great point, Cam. It was 3 to 3, and we cannot lose sight of that. So at one point, it was a tied game, six goals, three apiece. Here now, a power play, though, for the Canadians. Do you think capitalize on this opportunity to make it 3-0 here? They'll bring it in. Right side of your screen, working now down low, coming back across, and spin it out up top. Now they'll drive in. What a chance and a good feed there, a beauty of a pass. And he gets the goal on the man advantage. Okay, and you see that silver 1T activate. Something about regs that we saw even back to last year's World Championship or North American Championship was that he was really taking advantage of the few X-Factor abilities that he had 
And you see Pasternak taking, he's taking one-timers with him from pretty much anywhere because he's got silver one T. And it, all right, it's 15 to seven. 15 to seven. And you know, things look different right now than they did about 25 in-game minutes ago, Cam. No, absolutely. <laughs> things that, you know, the, the tightening of the collar, you know? And, you, and the best thing about the player cameras is you can see that happen on your screen, which is, adds a little bit of that immersion. You can see what they're feeling. And that's what makes this so exciting right now is he tries oh. to get that one across. And Drigger didn't even move. No, not at all. Here goes Eki. He's laid out there and dives across the ice there for a second. No call, but it looked like that was him going. He was doing a one-hand deke, so it looked like he dove right after. I thought that was a tripping penalty for sure. They don't, they don't issue diving penalties in NHL 23, so. No. <laughs> As we saw the first throw out there, that was Vimelka who did throw it out, so Regs had some room. It was a little bit scary, but he was able to keep that at bay. Now Eki's got it again. It's that one into the corner. Evades the bump. Now we set up behind the net. Up front. That one time feed denied. Good interception there by Regs. Four and a half to play here in the second period. Three nothing right now. Team Canada winning in game number two. The shot on and just clipped the angle. Second effort there. Just couldn't find his target. Regs is going to work right now in this contest. Hecky loose puck in front. Scores! Waved off, though, go. with my back count. <laughs> yeah, that might be some interference. Maybe, I'm thinking so. As it does get waved off, it does not count. Regs was smiling. And Eki's just focused now. Got to wonder what he's thinking as he's down by three with over uh, halfway gone through this game so far. That's there what he's is. thinking. That's what Eki's thinking. Looking for the goal, he gets one. And things look bleak right now for the Canadians. And every goal for Eki, it's funny because like he's losing this game, you know, handedly, well, by two goals at least. But every goal feels devastating because Canada's got to come back by so much. It's like a dagger into the balloon. Yeah. The balloon inflates a little bit, and then he pops it. Got to start a new balloon. That's well, it. The road to riches is paved in, what's the quote? I don't know it. I had it. Gold? Well, is it though? Is that the one? I don't know. I'll go with that. <laughs> As we got a final <laughs> minute here in this game number two, the second period. Real time, 10 seconds, we'll conclude it. Eki's looking for one more. Kind of reset this momentum. See if he'll force this one in into the middle. Well, he'll think better of it. There it is though, and he scores. Oh. Wow. That's a statement goal. Absolutely. It's <laughs> that is such an NHL 23 goal. Rex has someone right there staring at the puck. And Eki able to somehow get it through. I mean, he is, I don't know what else his players has got to do in that situation. One point one seconds left. That, that's a hard thing to stop and you know, if this game was on its own, we'd be going, all right, this is a this is a competitive yeah. game we got. Hey, CAD will definitely play better in the next game. I think so. At least that's a storyline, you know? And we got to talk about that and, and the resiliency of him and how he Absolutely. comes back out. Because I, I don't want to lose sight of this point. You mentioned it. He had three goals unanswered. Mm -hmm. So we can't yeah, just Yeah, I mean, say it was three to three. Yeah, we cannot just say it's team selection. We can't because he scored three. I mean, uh, Regs is probably the best player in the world, but it is 3-2 against Eki, who is arguably the best European in the world, or in, in Europe, sorry. So I mean, it's not out of the realm of possibility. You should adjust your play style. You obviously can't play like you normally would, right? And, and you need to adjust to what, what the team you have. Again, the first two lines for Czechia are very close in overall. And you just have to make sure that when the other lines are out, you can't give up rushes because Canada's advantage will be magnified there. As we tied it up here in the opening minute of period number three of game two, as Major wrote in chat, the road to wealth is paved with goals. Well, Eki 
He's putting goals on the board now, and the game is tied. I think he figured out the uh, just shoot on Vimelka. The shoot. Different, and that's a different play style we saw from Eki last night. Game number one versus game number two versus Cookie. Shots in game two were 30 to three. Wasn't even close to that in game number one, and that was the difference maker in that contest. Now Regs has got to go back to work. Back from the beginning. See what he does. That one's thrown out. And I got to ask you, get your thoughts here as somebody ingrained in the community as you are. How, how effective is just shooting the puck in NHL 23 for those who don't play the game as competitive? I mean, goaltenders in NHL 23 are probably in the worst state that they've ever been. So literally anything towards the net is an opportunity to go in. Uh, but I, I think the types of goals that normally go in are far different than they've ever been. One time cross or one timers from the Ovechkin spot no longer really go in as goaltenders slide across and make these crazy saves on one timers. But low far side and, and a lot of stuff behind the net is really impactful. But uh, it's impressive. I mean, like Aki is one of the best. The one thing about Aki is that he always adjusts to the person that he's playing almost better than anyone else. Uh, and you can see it in this game right here. In the first period, he was playing for possession, looking for the perfect goal. And he doesn't need to do that because, again, of the team advantage. He just needs to shoot. And that's what he started to do. And I don't know if he would be taking the shots that he normally would that he uh, had had this been kind of even. Uh, but that's a testament to him, adjusting to what he has uh, available to him. Great insight there from Cam. Good to have you on for this finals broadcast. Always more fun when we have more people involved in these Productions. 100%. We're halfway gone here in the third period. 18 to 7, your score line. That's going to be 19, but no, off the post. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. As we are tied in this game, so if it does remain tied, we will get an overtime in this game. So we might at least get one overtime. I don't know if we will get the synchronous OT that uh, electrified the sky for me down here, but. We will get an OT if this does remain tied. Reg's looking to change that in regulation, though. Down by nine again. I'm sorry, down by 11. I can count. Mathematics, Brandon. Stay in school. I live in Florida. It's fine. Uh, Lee's one in front there is a good feed there. Was denied. Defense picks that up, moves it up quickly through the neutral zone up the right side. Wrist shot blocked. Second wrist shot, maybe. No. Left side. Graves. Eki controlling the puck. Back to what he did in period number one now. Behind the net. Three defenders for the Canadians just smothering the mouth of the goal. But nobody pressuring behind. Don't want to give up that attacking opportunity. But Eki more than content with just draining the time. It's got to be frustrating if you're regs right now knowing... You need the puck to score, and you can't get it. He's got it now. Three to play here in the third period. And go offside. First offside we've seen in this game. Yeah, he resets to get that third line off. You can see him there as he's changing things up. He needs to get that line off the ice. Greg's managing the lines as well as he's managing this game, at least right now. We'll have to see a Herculean performance in games three and four. Coming up in just a little bit. Now we're still closing out game two. 100 seconds to conclude this game, at least in regulation, or will we see overtime? Eki looking to add to his tally. Pick up the first lead for his squad for this game. We are in the finals. This is game two. Regs now with it. Wraps it along the boards. Comes Regs to the middle. Wrist shot on scores. He's nice got the goal there. Back. There it is. Nice goal from Regs. And again, hey. You know, a win's a win. You know? <laughs> a win's a win. You're right. You got to. I said this before. You got to win a game to win the aggregate. So start with one. 
Oh, absolutely. But you got to know, like, right? Eki hates losing to Rank, so I think we're going to have a fun last 40 seconds here. I think you're right. I think that's the other storyline that we need to talk about here. The game would have been different before, but now it's going to be different in the next 30 seconds, I think. As here he goes. Eki dances. Fires one on. Backhanded. Top shelf. We're there we tied. go. And Barzell bangs it home. Tied yet again. That's exactly what you said. This is actually more personal than it is aggregate. I said it, you know, could Eki be comfortable losing a game? Yeah, if it means going for the victory, but it's up against regs of all people. That is like a blood rival at this point, I think, in their rivalry camp. Oh, absolutely. All right, we'll see if regs can do it again. See if regs can get the lead here late in the third period. He drives in now. Stick check breaks that free. He still has it, though. Along the boards. Now behind the net, pushed along. Out comes with it is Eki. Five seconds left. One last chance here. Races down the left aisle. Throws it in. In front scores! Point six <laughs> seconds. And that'll probably do it in this one. As he shot on late, and he's able to hammer home the rebound. As how I think he blocked that. I think Regs blocked that first shot with under a second to go, and Eki is going to take the lead here, and it's a 12-goal deficit. Regs puts his hands up in disbelief, like, well, I did what I could do. And if we look at the game for what it is, 5-4, your final score, the Finns win game two as well. If we look at it for what it is, if we ignore game number one, you're only down by one in aggregate. So again, managing the game is part of this process. Regs did a good job at that up against a really good and a really revengeful Eki right now with his mission in mind. No, oh, absolutely. And a big, big win there for Eki. Again, beating Regs, that's big for him. But, you know, I'm, I'll say this. Whether the score is, you know, a 12, 12 goal difference in the aggregate, I mean... I want to see Cat have an answer back because 15 to 4 is inexcusable regardless of ping and team. Agreed. And as we just saw, Regs lost by one. So I want to see him with an answer back here. And I think we'll get the best game that we can out of Cad. And hey, maybe that's a seven goal advantage and he gets it back close. Who knows? Yeah, it could be as we bring you to the four box real quick. And we'll turn it over to get some thoughts here as we take a breath. Game three will start here momentarily. Uh, but let's throw it down, over, and up. I guess because it's like Brady Bunch. We're throwing it up to Brandon and Anthony Grizz, Major. You guys take it away. <laughs> As you see, we go back into the two box here. Brandon Bigsby, Anthony Scabilia, and, I mean, Grizz, you kind of look at how Rex did manage that game as Nick and Cam were talking about. And, you know, you do still have the two games left. It's a 12-goal deficit, but I guess the one bright spot for Canada is that you do have those two games, and the gap didn't, didn't get any wider than what it was before. Mike was muted. My apologies. Um, so I, I think one of the things with Regs is Regs played a very complete game, a very good game. Unfortunately, he went up against Eki, who is, again, one of the best players at adjusting to his opponent's play style throughout the game. I think he may have taken a note from his partner in, hey, you know, if you shoot the puck on net, it's probably going to go in on this guy. Uh, he got some 4-2 at his goals. Uh, but Regs and Eki, I mean, everything that we were promised, everything that we thought would be delivered was three last minute goals. Unbelievable stuff out of Eki and Regs. You see this... Th Start pulling one way. The other player starts pulling the other way. It was 3 nothing Regs. And Regs looked like he was going to give his team a fighting chance here moving forward. But unfortunately for him, he's playing against Eki. Eki, very composed. Very good at playing down a couple of goals. Never wavered for a moment. Got one. He had to battle through that goal that was called back. Scored at the end of the second period. Scored at the beginning of the third period. And then those last two third minute goal or end of third period last minute goals as well to close this one out 
Yeah, and we'll take a quick look at the live matchup standing to kind of give us a visual look of where this series is at right now. So this is basically the halftime point. You're two games in, you have two games to go. You see that first game between Yessi and Cad, 15 to four. We'll have game three, the second match between those two upcoming here in just a few moments. And that game that you just saw, Eki defeating Regs five to four in regulation. And Grizz, I have to ask you, we know what happened in that game one. We know that there's a lot of opinion so to speak, both from those watching and even from Cad himself. If you are Cad, I mean, what is the mentality? Because I'm sure not only is he not happy with himself or the circumstances, but he's kind of getting fueled up by those around him here a little bit too. Uh, Cad never wavers from volatility, I'll, I'll say. Um, he loves <laughs> to kind of stir the pot a little bit. We've seen him go at it with Cat and other streams, stuff like that. And it's fuel to the fire. He knows that he got you know, handed in game one. Game two, he cannot lose his patience like he did in game one. He wasn't playing for the team. He was playing just like a chicken with his head cut off, running around, going for every bump, getting more frustrated as the game went on without realizing that, hey, I need to play for regs a little bit here. He did not do that in game one. He is now given the opportunity to come back in game two and slow this thing down a little bit and maybe put a little bit of a dent. He proved he can score. He scored four goals in the first game. It's just that there was 15 on the other side. So do what you can to slow down defensively. Maintain your composure. Don't get caught out of position. We saw what Regs was able to do against Eki. He didn't run himself into, into worry or into position. He played a very good game. Eki just found a way to win, as Eki does. So here we go. I mean, we're getting set up for a nice, uh, nice finish here. Yeah, we're getting set up for a night finish. And, you know, it's going to be interesting to see because you mentioned that he maybe didn't put Regs in the best position. Remember, this is Cad's first time in this tournament. So you maybe kind of wonder how it is adjusting from typically you're playing for yourself. Now you're having to consider that teammate, consider those three extra games. Is this one of those extra wrinkles that the format with this tournament has? Absolutely right. As I think are our, our just waiting for our teams to get settled up here just moments away and again to remind everyone kind of what they're playing for it was a 15 to 4 victory in game one cad taking that loss and then coming into chat letting them know that hey i don't like playing with Czechia. maybe uh not not the best roster to go up against a a canadian roster but you know it's not just the roster it's how well you can maintain yourself we saw regs do it against eki again regs did not win but he showed what is possible with even with the team disadvantage to manage the game, slow the bleeding. Yeah, and you know, it's not as if Canada is the only team that's chosen Czechia. A lot of teams, a lot of players have felt that Czechia is the second best team next to Canada. So it's not one of those things to where this is just how things ended up as the third or fourth or fifth worst team. This is a team that a lot of people in this tournament have constantly said, this is our best chance at going up and matching up with Canada in game. And it's just one of those things to where sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. And it was an unfortunate circumstance with Cavs as we mentioned, they weren't sure if he was going to be able to play. Chose Team Canada, assuming he was going to be able to because they would have started out down six to nothing. It puts them in this situation. And now really all you can do is to try to fight through it and just focus on the future to get yourself back into this thing. Yeah, and again, I, I mentioned it already. Patience is the absolute biggest thing. I think one of the biggest flaws in CAD's game, one, was the fact that he continued to run and try to hit off the puck and just kept getting those bumps absorbed, and then he's pulled out of position. The slot was wide open for the picking, and you simply cannot do that against another really good player. Just a couple of moments away, the finals of the 2023 IIHFE World Championship. Another big thank you to our amazing sponsors in Skoda and Strauss, everything that they do to help support us and to support this event. And, you know, I'm very curious. You kind of mentioned some of the adjustments that you would make on CAD side. But if you're Jesse, kind of just have to assume that you keep doing what you're doing. You have this large gap. You play near perfectly in the last game that you played. You got to assume there's not really going to be many changes made to the plan for him. Well, I think offensively, it's the same thing. Continued dominating behind the net. Cad was not able to cover that backside, and he kept giving him the slot as well for some of those open looks. Continue shooting the rock, continue maintaining possession along the boards. But defensively, Cad was able to generate offense on him by carrying the puck into the corner, spinning it with the LT off of a check, and throwing it out in front to a wide open man back door. So definitely adjustments can be made on both sides. He did still give up four goals despite scoring 15.
Yeah, we'll see what Cat can, can cook up as we're ready to go. Nick, Cam, we're gonna throw it to you guys. Take it away for the call of game number three. Thanks, guys. Here with you, Nick DeMeo, Cam Halbert. Listen, man, I gotta get some thoughts here. What does Cad do now up against not only an insurmountable, potentially insurmountable lead, but also with a lot of maybe pride to play for of what happened in the last game mere an hour ago? Oh, I would be stunned if Cad loses this game. Now, if he wins enough to make it interesting, we'll see. But we're definitely going to get the lean forward gamer stance the entire way. So uh, <laughs> I think for Yessi, his uh, best bet is to score a few early so that he just kind of gives up, which it looked like he did in game one, because I would fully expect Cad to play the best that he possibly can here. We'll see if Cad can do that right now. Game number three. 20 to eight year aggregate. Four goals scored by the Canadians in each of their last two games. Let's see if Cad gets one there. Is that ricochets off the goalie? He's moved out of harm's way. This is around one defender. Answers around two. Yes, he looking for that backhand and deny. Nice little move there by Yessi. The Counterattack is on now. Cad throws it on net. And yes, he plays it out, and almost that one bit him. Cad trying to capitalize on every mistake, and that's going to be the key to this game right now. Nice forecheck there by Cad trying to break that puck free in the defensive end for Yessi, but he's able to get that out right into the bread basket. Cad will throw it out too. Trying to keep the play going. And they will. Right side there, that one's loose. Stolen once, then twice. It'll come back out to center. Krejci will try it, now left side. Center point working. Down low, Krejci again. He had it for a minute, tried to turn with the puck and just could not get it past the defender of the Finns right now. Yes, he's going to work now, just throws it in down low. And out comes with it is Cad. So a little bit of back and forth, a very different look to this first period than we saw in game number one between these two. Oh, absolutely. And again, I think that the focus is much higher from the start for Cad in this one. And that's just, you know, a product of losing the way he did, but... Much more controlled way to play between these two. We'll get an icing here, 8.45 to go in the first period. We already had 19 goals at this point in the game one, so this is definitely a better start. <laughs> I think that I think that Cad's got to win. Let's talk like actually have a chance to win here. Uh, he's got to win by seven. You know, seven. he wins by seven and we got a heck of a next game, but... That would still mean Regs has to win by five, which just sounds ridiculous. Yeah, they just got to tie it, which sounds insane and easy at the same time. And again, if it was anybody else, I'd be like, no, this can't happen. But I've seen, I saw the craziness happen yesterday right here with two GWC winners. Why shouldn't I expect to see it again? So we'll see if we do. Right now, no score though. 14 minutes into this game, but there's one on cue. Yessi breaks it open in game three, and the lead continues to run away from the Canadians. Big goal for Yessi there, and I think that, you know, he played the period pretty well in terms of defense and takes advantage. And again, it's just another goal off the rush. Uh, Canada, or using Team Canada against Czechia is going to score off the rush very easily. Not seen this kind of performance from Yessi so far in these playoffs. It's been fun to watch here so far. As they had USA in round number one up against, uh, I can't remember what Germany picked in the quarterfinals, but uh, I think they might have had Czechia if I'm not mistaken. But they did win that game as a slap shot comes in. We'll play that out. Final three minutes here. Takes that bump, loses the puck. Fresh legs coming out for Team Finland. Trying to send that up the board, so that'll get denied. Verona will win that back. Keeps it in, good play there by Cad. Now a one-on-one -on -one chance though, with the trailer. Can he get the pass across? No, he gets a shot on. Let's push back out to the would-be shooter a second time. Sillinger behind the net. Dances once, tries to wrap around. And 
Yessi trying to get fancy with it here in the closing seconds of period number one. There was a feed for Cad. That one was picked up by a stick of the finished players. And time now winds down. One period gone in game three. One nothing your score. Finland well in command. A good period for Yessi. But I, I mean, I think it was good for Cad as well. He didn't let the game, you know, get away from him. And, and he still had his opportunities as well. So uh, I think he's just got to start burying there. The time on attacks varies close. A much different game uh, than game number one. Definitely agree, as we saw, I think, six goals in the first period. I know you said 19, but uh, six goals in the first period from my count here. Uh, I believe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was 19 match one, so, I mean, yeah, to be fair, there was a lot. Uh, just six in the first period, which seems a lot now compared to just one in game number three here. Let's see what Cad can do. Everyone's legs now settled underneath them, it seems. As we have a different paced game so far through one period. Yes, he sets up shop in the offensive end for him, his team one more time. Got it up the left board. Now behind the net. Three men were back there. He'll bring that to the front, but lose it before he can make that pass or shot. That'll break it free. For Canada. There's a good effort there. That was kick saved out back to Cad. Cad one more time. There's a wraparound chance. The goalie got there quicker. One more from Cad and it bounces past the goalie and in off the side of the goalie and into the net. There we go. All right. He's back. Okay. That's one. That's one. That is one indeed. Can the momentum shift enough? Straight lining. Here goes Cad. Oh, and just pulled back just too late. To give himself a chance on that scoring opportunity. Now splitting the defense. Yes, he. Oh, and he almost had one there. Yes, he's got it still, though. Keeps it in from that intercepted pass. Wrist shot. Bounced up into the air. Krejci will bring that down. He'll start it back out for the Canadiens. Through the middle, breakaway chance, backhand scores! A beauty of a goal there by Cad, And we've got 10 on the board in aggregate. There we go, all right. He's got nice little split the D there, some speed. And now he's got the lead. First time in his two games that he's got a lead. Gotta wonder where that was all series long so far from Cad, because obviously he has it in him to do that. And it worked right there. Now we'll see what Yessi can do as he's leveled there at the left circle. Slow to get up, but he does. He still has possession from the corner. In front, scores! That behind the net to the short side. They love that 1T play. And that's 22 up there for the Finns. Big answer back for Yessi. Something that he keeps doing, even in game one, is that he didn't go away. Again, this is the first time that we've gotten to see him on a stage like this in 1v1 esports for NHL. And again, playing someone as good as Cad, I mean, phenomenal answer back here. He's not going away at all. Yeah, he's just pestering himself in. And if we look at the score lines from the quarterfinals, Finland, Jesse L versus Captain Dirty Dangler, four to three, and he had to fight in that game. And then one game, uh, two between Jesse and Dirty Dangler handedly, four nothing. But most of that was from offensive defense. Like you mentioned, Cam, he had the puck in the third period in the end of the Germans for about 10 in-game minutes. And that was the deciding factor. And it can just suck the life out of a team when you're able to keep the puck in that end for so long. No, absolutely. And I think that that's super important here. And I think that's something, again, that Eki and, and Jesse and Jesse both know now is that, again, they don't have to play a ton and go for a, a lot of offense constantly. They just have to hold on to the puck. We'll see how the final five minutes pan out. Poke check there. Still on hurdle stick. Cad spinning down low. Good effort. And he was able to shovel that one on with the backhand, but couldn't get it through the five hole. Will be hit there. Will Yessi. That will be chopped along the boards. And laced over for Pasternak. He's got it with some speed. Cutting across. 
Couldn't get the shot off. Still has it, though. Backhand looking for it. Oh, tried that one-touch deke I think that you were talking about before, Cam, and he just couldn't get it off. Oh, unfortunately, that last chance puck movement, we don't see very much of it. Yeah, the big feature they touted. We don't see a lot of it in NHL 23, though, as much as we'd like to. <laughs> There's the wraparound, though. And yes, he takes the lead in this game three. Big wrap there from Yessi. And now, Cam playing for pride. Doesn't want to lose this one. Two minutes left here in the second period. And now it feels like it's probably all she wrote, Cam, I think. So what we look hey. at, though, is the, how the game pans out for Cad. Can he come back and win? And then, honestly, what that Regs v. Eki series is going to look like. Eki took game one with .6 seconds left. I mean, he's going to want to win again. No, absolutely. I think that Regs, you're going to get Regs' best game we might have ever, we might ever see in this next one. I can assure you that. A far difference for Regs up against Eki when he won against Pasta, uh, Pep Costa 10 to nothing in 10 to 2 yesterday, putting Canada into the finals with the aggregate score of 26 to 9. Now on the other side of that, 23 to 10, your aggregate, at least right now. What a crazy sequence of events here to start this. Like, I would have never guessed that was the, that's how it would have played out. Ever. Ever. Yeah, no. <laughs> but here we are. And uh, that, that's really what this comes down to. This is why this aggregate series is one of the most interesting formats in NHL esports. No, nope, absolutely. My favorite thing is the EUs and NAs just battling it out in chat every time that you get one of these, which is my favorite part of the events like this. Yeah, as we saw in the World Finals uh, just a couple weeks ago, them going back and forth as there goes Yessi. Four to two now in this game. Big, big goal there on the backhand. And at least he's taking advantage of all of his opportunities. Something we saw in that World Finals was the, in chat, the, hello, EU, this is NA, pick up. I mean, I'm wondering when we're going to see that in chat today. But the other way around, as Yessi continues to pour it on. That might be it. I don't know. Five to two. And I'd have to argue here, Cam. I mean, is this, is this the best Cad has to offer? Is this his best game right now? I don't I think, think the, so. No, I think it's an issue with Cat. Like I've watched him at pretty much every esports event that he's competed in. Like something that he always might struggle with is like mentality. When he gets down a little bit, he kind of mails it in, uh, and that that might be what's happening here a little bit. Uh, but nonetheless, he still doesn't want to lose by a ton. But yes, he is just burying everything. He is. He's burying everything. And I mean, that, that kind of write-off does not work in an aggregate format. This is not, uh, it's not how this can go. You could be blown out in a seven series game in one game, but that's only one game. Here, every goal matters. Exactly, like we, we talked about this before in game one, like there's losing, and, and, like losing a game is whatever, that's fine. But losing a game six to four, as opposed to eight to one is far different because the score matters. Like you're letting your teammate down by just not really finishing the game out strong. And I think that's kind of what happened in game one. Yeah, with Ekin being out for Team Sweden, uh, Antonio Manon said that in the interview. He said, you know, I wish I could have had a better chance to win. I, I played well. Uh, and he did. He won 6-5 to five in overtime versus Dodds and then lost 4-3 to three in overtime versus Dodds. So, like, he did his part to keep his team in the game, but up against two forfeits you know that's letting your team down and, and, and those are six goals that you can't get back so uh the team mentality of this of the sport is something to be considered it's what makes this format unique and 1v1 nhl esports doesn't it work this way typically you have it here and it's a different play style you have to account for no absolutely and yeah you have to know like the ping is always going to be an issue right but it's a lot better than what than what playing on west server would be on east and in hockey ultimate team i mean regs alluded to that well it's not like it's 
perfect. Obviously, 100 ping is still 100 ping, but it's much different on peer-to-peer. -peer. But you know that going in. So your play style can't be as fast as you would normally play. And obviously, some players are going to adjust to that a little bit worse than others. That said, though, we go back to Canada's uh, you know, progress through the rounds here. 26-9 to nine in aggregate yesterday against Czechia and 22-9 to nine versus Switzerland. So they play fast. They can still do that. They're just up against a really tough, uh, tough situation too. here. Yeah. As I believe Team Canada led the group stage in goals four as well. So they can strike when they do. Finland out here just putting on a huge performance. I guess the story goes back to the hero of the quarterfinals. Now the hero of the finals in Yesiel. Well, of all of the three the three tournaments in in or in the IHFE World Championship that we've had, where Eki has been the victor in all two, and we'll assume that the next one, this one as well, uh, this has definitely been his easiest. As last year we went to double synchronized overtime. <laughs> yeah, we did, and that was madness. That was madness too, Cam, because... Oh, that one rings off the post. Uh, the synchronous OT, the one side scored, but it was later in the game than the other side, so they still had a chance to get back. Mm -hmm. And that was the crazy part. So we had to wait to see what happened on the other side of the ice before we even had a final result. That's putting a lot of uh, fate out of your hands. And Yessi made sure that was not the case today as he had the entire destiny controlled by himself in that first game no absolutely what <laughs> that that was absolutely wild but I, i'm i like no lie this is one of my favorite if not my favorite 1v1 tournament in terms of just the format because yeah like a loss we see we see this a lot where a game like so let's just say that they're playing in a best of five and these two games you know yes he scored 21 goals in two games okay but it really doesn't mean much other than because if cad wins the next game by one then he's just eliminated that like, it doesn't really matter. But now every single goal matters that much more, which makes it just far more entertaining, in my opinion. Makes you wonder how we can implement that in other NHL eSport tournaments to, to bring it together, especially now with the advent of some of the cross-play connectivity and other features that we are seeing in the game. Oh, absolutely. Oh, and Eki, or sorry, Yessi puts that on there. I was going to say Eki could be interested in a tournament like that, hence the... The missed call out, but here we go, seven to two, with under a minute to go. Statement by SEL. Yeah, that's. I think this is a statement game for him. I think the 15-4 was its own thing. Here, though, this is going okay. I can do that again. I can do something yeah. similar again. Because if you do it one time, it's a fluke. Everybody says that. You do it one time, it's a it's a routing. It was it wasn't your night, whatever. To do it twice there is a good response back from Cat. At least he gets one more on the board there. There we go. To do it two times says a lot about how you play the game. Absolutely. As we wind down the third period of game three. A very different conversation today in game three versus last year in game three, Cam, where you and I were both on the edge of our seat going into that final game. Well, Regs just has to put up 16. <laughs> and if there's one player that can do it, it's Regs. Yes, completely. Against Eki. Ag against Eki. <laughs> um, you know, I... If it was anybody else other than Eki, I'd be like, yeah, that's that's completely doable. <laughs> I mean, Rex is going to try, which is my favorite part, because he's going to go in there and put up six. Like That's yes. that's what I fully expect is that I expect like a six nothing start uh, just to make it, you know, somewhat. But regardless, the, the problem is that while Eki knows that he's won, most players probably coast in this situation. Eki's not going to want to take a loss regardless to Rex. So Rex is going to get a very tough one. Uh, no matter what, but an unfortunate sequence here uh, for for Canada is CAD uh, a better performance than the prior game. 
but any time that you you give up 22 goals in two games like you're you're not gonna you're, you're not gonna be able to hang so uh phenomenal by jesse l that's a statement performance and uh he's put his team in in a, a prime position to win the 2023 ihfe world championship and as regs just said as we'll go to the four box here uh regs just said in chat guys uh Eki and i will both give this 100 percent guaranteed and i think that tells you this is beyond just this game. This is beyond just this tournament. Want to get your guys' thoughts on what we're about to see. Let's put away Finland Championship. We'll call that out when we get there. Uh, this is actually personal between these two. Yeah, and this is going to be a lot of fun. We know the history between Eki and Regs. And, you know, I know, like you said, I know the aggregate is what it is. The situation is what it is. But we still get to see two of the best in the world face off against one another. And keep in mind, that game, too, was close. Eki had that goal with 0.6 seconds left and had to tie it with 57 seconds left. So that first game between those two players was really, really fun and really, really tight. And Regs just said it. They're both going to give it their all 100% game guaranteed so we still have something to look forward to even regardless of everything else on the side as grizz I'll, I'll toss it over to you here for once, your once opinion again, i mean uh, you yeah. didn't mic sorry about that i, I was trying to jump yeah, in no before you threw it to me but i keep forgetting i'll mute my mic so uh once again i mean going back to the last years before we even get into eki and rags version two i mean cad still scored seven which usually is going to give you a fighting chance problem being he gave up 22 not something you can do when you're trying to help your teammate out. So now we're going to look at the game within the game. Eki versus Regs. European best player versus North American best player. Going head to head. We saw it in game one. Game one between these two was awesome. I expect Regs to kind of try to beat Eki in this game. And Eki, same thing. Eki probably knows that there's a good chance they're going to take the gold in this. But he's going to play for pride. He does not like losing. The, the reason these two players are the best players in the world is because they hate losing more than they enjoy winning. Yeah, and to me, I don't think there's any doubt that we could see the matchup again in another tournament in the next few months. You never know. And, you know, you kind of mentioned that these two players, they have that history. And it's a rivalry that has a lot of respect between one another. As you get a look at the aggregate scoreline three games in as of now, that second game, he mentioned it five to four. And it took two goals in the last minute for Eki to even get it to that point. So even despite everything going on, like you said, Grizz, Regs wants to win this just as badly with or without the aggregate score even being in question. Yeah, absolutely right. Again, you know, Regs is going to do everything he can do to pull a rabbit out of the hat. It's going to be very unlikely that that happens. But again, he's going to play to also try and defeat Eki, knowing that the odds are against him. Yeah, and you know, the odds being guessed him as we'll swing it back into the studio here. Brandon Bigsby and Anthony Scabilia. One more game remaining here in the finals of the 2023 IIHF E World Championship. A big shout out once again to our sponsors in Skoda and Strauss for all of their support. And I mean, Grizz, with this game four, knowing what we know about these two players, I know you've covered this matchup between these two time after time. What do you expect to see from these two? Aggregate score and everything aside, because you always know every single game has that different element to it it seems like even though they know each other so well well once again I, I think regs played a very very good game one i also think Eki maybe didn't play his best game at the start but found a way to adjust and found out what worked he gained a lot of possession early but wasn't able to get any shots through then he found some shooting lanes was able to put a couple goals in tie the game up and just a hectic final minute to that third period in that game i think we're going to see that once again these players pushed one another to be the best version of themselves. They love playing one another. It's best on best here. You know, ping aside, team advantage aside, it's personal. And that's why these matchups are just phenomenal. And you don't really get them anywhere else but tournaments like this. Yeah, and we're just about a minute away here from Pup Drop, and uh, I'd love to get your opinion on this as well, just kind of considering the circumstances of everything with that ping, with that team differential. Do you think maybe we see a little bit more of an aggressive game since there really isn't anything to lose for either side, or do you think we kind of see just a normal game where we can see that same kind of three to two score to where a lot of these games between these two typically are really close and there's not a lot to be given? 
I, I think we are going to see a close game again. I think Regs is going to do everything he can to break it open early, as we saw in game one. But again, Eki able to just adapt time and time again, changes the in-game strategies more than probably any other player that we've seen or covered. And for Eki, it's the same thing. You're just going to try to play your game. There's, you know, uh, the the gold on the uh, uh, the gold aside, I, I think that's probably unfortunately been decided to this point due to the previous games. So now they're playing for pride. They're playing for bragging rights. All of the above. Uh, you know, Eki definitely does not want to lose to Regs here. And we'll see what happens with that matchup. It's the final game of the finals right now. Nick Cam, we're going to toss it right over to you guys. Game four underway now and this one as we mentioned a little bit more to play for the aggregate might be what it is but reg said it best cam he's going to put on his best effort and so will Eki to see who walks out of game four the winner of the game let alone what happened to the championship no absolutely we are going to see a fantastic finish to this tournament and to this series in regs and Eki. As here we go. Eki squirreled that one on the net. He'll pick it up from the half boards. He's skating now behind the net. You know what he's looking for right here. We see it every time now. How do you defend against that consistently? And you have to go and pressure him. And there goes Eki with the first one. There it is. Just throw it out in front. Bregs in position, but your defenseman just really not going to make a move there. He's got to tie his stick up. And a good start here for Eki in game number four. So with the first strike for Eki in the fins, see if Regs can respond. And he'll look for one there. That one's deflected in front. One time chance, second effort, third effort. Off the post, off the goalie and in. Big goal there. You see the smile from Regs as he gets back even. Again, he's having some fun here. He really wants the win. That's a beauty of a goal. I like the persistency on that one. As we've got two goals in the first five minutes. Very different from what we saw in game two between these two men. This is the Xbox last game of game of the series of the finals between Finland and Canada. But the game within a game right now is what we're paying attention to. Eki versus Regs, part infinity at this point you got to go back and see how many times they've battled it out it, it's been a ton as regs has it drives in from the right point bumped lost possession got it back center point now still with it d to d to d Pops that one off the goalie knock picks it back up They'll steer this one along found his intended recipient after it trickled off a skate or two He's got it behind the net. Controlling the pace of play in this 1-1 tie. Middle of the first period. Now up top once more. Moving it well. Rags trying to feed that one in. And it was touched up and sent along. But maybe a misplaced pass leads to an icing. 9.32 to go in the first. And a good start here for Rags of being able to control most of the offensive zone time here. Again, that's what he's going to have to do with the skating differential between Canada and Czechia. He's off here. One by Regs. He'll come up with it. Fires that one on and scores! Regs takes the lead in this game four. It's 2-1. to one. The goal there for Regs to get back out in front. The one thing he's got to make sure he doesn't is chase the game. It's going to be awfully tough with the team differential, but Regs able to regain the lead here late in the first. A chasing the game mentality can sometimes come back to bite you. Talk a little bit more about that cam as somebody who's ingrained in playing this game so much. Oh, no, it's huge. I mean, like, it, it's it, it's a great job by Regs here. I mean, he adjust, him and Eki both adjust very well. Um, I think defensively, I think Eki does offensively as well. The thing about Regs when he plays is he just holds on to the puck. He's going to do the same thing no matter what, uh, which is just a testament to how good he is because everyone knows what's coming offensively, but... Uh, it's their adjustments on defense that, that make it so impressive. A shot there whistles by the goalkeeper. Two to one now your scoreline at the final quarter of game number four's first period. 
Tied up along the boards. Out comes with it is Riggs. They send it along the boards. Picked up now on the left side. Chopped, but out. A little clear out of the zone. Have to regroup and regain. It's twisted, turned, and driven back into the offensive end for Riggs. Misplaced that pass as that one was picked up by the defender for the Finns. They'll come back in on the counterattack. But off of the line change, lots of defenders back there for Regs. Stick handling well. Dubois down low. Tried to tuck that one back. Pushed up along the boards. People poking at it. Regs will come out with it. South sauce. Right point. Looking in. Oh, and that one's just stepped in and taken away. Now a quick breakaway, maybe. They're back checking nicely. Stabbed at it and couldn't bury the dish. Good use of the poke check to try to poke that one in, Cam, but he came up just short. Big save there for Regs as he gets the Melka to stop that one. And a shot late or, or late in the period to potentially go up by two. But a perfect start here from Regs to end the first with a 2 1 advantage. So two to one, your score line at the end of one. Regs with the lead. Eki looking to go 2 0 in this finals battle against Regs. An impressive first period. Again, Regs is going to play his best no matter what. Time on attack there, you see, is completely flipped from the first series. Is Eki kind of just did his job to hold on to the puck, maybe kill the clock by just playing, um, which we, which we kind of thought that might be a game plan. And this one. Regs with a two to one ratio in terms of time on attack. All signs point positively for Regs right now. As here we go again, the quintessential Regs camera view. You see just the top of his head. He's <laughs> on offense right now. I said that's the gamer move for Regs. You talked about lean forward before. Regs' gamer mode is that picture right there you're seeing on your screen. Oh, yeah, for sure. He's got it once more. Kind of straight line through the defense. Stopped there before he could cause any harm. To Team Finland and Eki. Eki will come back with it. And defender in two just shots that on. Bounces off the glass off the save. One's wanded up now for Veranda. He'll be accosted by two defenders. Dances nicely. L skating. Wow, and that's the work of Regs there. Just beautifully done to try to buy some space. He still has it, though. Controlling the puck well. Good possession. And time on attack here. it back in the cycle starting to go to work here he comes out with it wrap around chance and the outstretch stick of the defense there by Eki keeps that one away and offsides the call as they are to fighting keep that right in. now yeah no no time and space available again regs being kept to the outside but again controlling that time on attack which is a kind of a quintessential regs game Regs with it again. Couple of loose sticks. Banging the puck out. Eki will come out with it. Eki with a little bit of room there and just cuts the angle too wide. This is off to the left. Krejci out with the counterattack. One on one. Back checking a plenty. Is that to the right point? Regs likes to drive that in. Try to go back down low for those feeds from the trailer. Looking to do that here as he keeps that in the zone. The shot there blocked by the winger. They'll carry it out. Shoves that one through, but offside, 9.30 to go. Halfway gone through this game, number four. Again, I think Regs is doing everything he's got to. Again, that, that, that team disadvantage, he's got to work around that, and he's doing that so far. A good game so far, he's halfway through. Slap shot Big there block. was blocked in front by the defense. Big step up there from Rags. He had the player in the right position. Now can he counter? He's got the lead. Can he pour it on with one more? Extending this to two in this game. 
Lots of people pulling for regs in the chat as well here in this battle of Goliaths. This tournament of champions. Fakes the slap shot, does Eki. He's got it center point on the give and go. Eki again. Left circle. Nice pass there. Now back out to the point once more. Now the possession working for Eki's side as he tries to find his opportunity into the middle. Defense collapsing around the puck. Mercer. Trying to dangle across two defenders. Can't do so. And that will end that scoring chance. Regs over the blue line and in. Stop and turn. That one's rolled along. Wrist shot score. Short side. Pasternak does it again. And Regs makes the lead two. Fantastic goal there, short side. The cycle the puck and bury that one. And this is looking a lot like game number one. I expect we'll see uh, a pretty strong finish out of Eki in the third period, but Regs is doing everything he has to to win this one. It's 3.48 to play here in the second period. Let's see what Eki does here to respond. Regs trying to add it to the tally before the period expires. Eki looking to cut into this two-goal deficit. As we mentioned, a personal battle between these two. Makes you miss TDI Hockey and his stats of keeping track of all the players across all the tournaments. <laughs> that's, a, that's a while ago. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm bringing back the references, man. Rashad there, scooped out of the sky. And a good glove save there by the goalie. Regs was looking for that one. You see the smile on his face. Unbelievable. What a save there. That was a big break for Eki. Needed that one again. Uh, up, trailing by two. Well within reach still, but a huge save on that one. Ace off one by Eki. He'll carry it out of the zone. And it brings it in. One last effort, maybe. Forces it across the front and at the doorstep. Couldn't close it. Last chance. Wrist shot up and wide. And that's going to do it for the second period. One period left in this finals battle. But between these two, a two-goal deficit. All right, a big battle on our hands here. Always fun to see Regs versus Eki. And you see the time on attack there. Regs definitely in control. This one, you see that MS, 134 ping. But Regs is doing everything that he can to win this one and give them one win today in the finals. Here we go. So face off now. A foot. Puck dropped. Regs with it. Try to score again. As this one now is just to see if Regs can walk away with a decisive victory with the underdog rated team against Eki. Let's see if Eki takes this lightly or not. I don't think he will. Is that slap? Oh, I thought he was going to hit that slap shot, but he doesn't. And he fakes it, drives it down, finds the guy in the slot, and he bangs it home. There it is. All right. Eki started to come alive in the third period of game one. It looks like he's going to come alive here in game number two between these two. That was a smart move there to fake the slap shot and then drive low as that one was fired in. And saved off the rebound. The defense for the Finns will pick it up. Being across now. Cousins win. Mikey skates along the circle tracing. He'll get that one stolen away by Verona. Out with it will be Regs. Angled along for Pasternak. He'll find his way down low with some space. Now he's got room up top on the right point. Across the middle. Now working the left side. Regs just controlling the puck so magnificently in this series so far. You got to tip your hat to him. Battling up against, as we talked about, the lower overall rated uh, team as a good shot there came in. This is beautiful work right now by Regs. Now trying to do the same thing Eki was doing earlier. He's trying to find that spot. He'll reset. Now it's back in down low once more. 
good that along the boards. Fedden on the give and go. Wrist shot there. Save. And picked up by Regs. Halfway gone here in the third period. Looking for a lane in. Oh, that defender came in looking for the one team, but he found it down low instead. And Eki clapping that goal. He knew that was a good one. It's 4-2. Great feed across. He bit on that and a hat trick as well. It's now 4-2 lead with 10 minutes to go in the third. And just look on the, the time on attack. Game. 17 minutes time on attack here. This is what Regs does. He, it, It's very difficult. He, he almost always dominates time on attack. Uh, and usually his goals all end up with a one-timer of some sort, and you know it's coming, but he just has such great vision in this game, and it's what made him so good, as there's a nice far side post play, and he's fired up, as that's a 5-2 lead. He is fired up. As he's feeling it right now, and you gotta wonder, what will Eki do as he takes the time out there with 10 minutes, oh, 9.13 to play? And we'll see. I don't know. That might have been too much for Eki to overcome just because he hasn't had many chances at all. Good chat comment here. Regs is a true pro. He does his job always, and you can trust him. That's probably the best way to encapsulate what Regs does on the ice. No, absolutely. As we'll have interviews with both sides at the conclusion of this game. Brandon and Anthony will be bringing that to you. Stay tuned for that. But for now, business to take care of. Down by three is Eki. As he's going to turn on the burners here. See what he can do as time winds down in this contest. Looking over his shot blocked. Couldn't get the shot off. And he'll get deflected onto the stick for Regs. And he's down low. Legs right side. Into the cross. There's this setup again. Oh, and he tried to fish that one in, but the goalie stopped it instead. Big save there. Five minutes to go. Aki's really got to start to push the play now anytime he gets the puck. 5-13, as you mentioned. Face off to the left. Defensive circle for Eki. One back by Regs. He's got it on the defensive stick there on the left side. Fights off a defender. And sends it in. Four to play. Time winding down here in game number four. In front, lots of space, and that whistles up and over. He might have gotten a piece of it. That might have ended it had Regs been able to bury that one. But it remains a 5-2 game. So with three minutes to play, Reg's looking to add another one to the tally. And I don't know if Eki walks away with this one. I've seen it happen before, but we'll see. Low shot, smothered, thrown out. Now two left. Hurdle, left side, now feeds it across the ice. Lots of space here for Regs as he's getting checked there on the right circle. Riggs picks it up once more. Real time, 60 seconds to conclude this. And we'll see who gets the final goal. Will it be Eki for a comeback, or will Regs pour it on? But you look at the aggregate there. Near 30 goals for Eki and Team Finland. So despite the loss, as that's another one there. And you know that Regs feels good at least about getting one up over Eki. There we go. And again, a good commanding win as well, it appears, barring any crazy finishes. But a 6-2 win, big on, again, this ping, no excuses, a team disadvantage. Regs did all he could in this one. And a fantastic game number four from him to even up the series between him and Eki here. As they split the series indeed. But with time winding down, Eki said it. He wanted the trifecta. He wanted the back to back to back. He wanted the dynasty. And Eki 
now can say he's done it. The 2023 E-World Champions are Team Finland. Eki and Yesiel win it for the third time for their country. Fantastic finish from these guys, no pun intended. Again, uh, the odd smile on the face of Eki knowing that he didn't win that last game, but able to easily take home the gold medal here today. Phenomenal performance from Yesiel and Eki as they take down Regs and Cad in the finals. A Herculean performance by Yesiel set the stage for what was a powerhouse performance by the Finns to cement Eki's vision of doing it three times in a row. As we'll go back to the four box here before we get the interview set up. Uh, we'll, Cam, your, your final thoughts on that game four before we uh, go to the two box and let, let the boys take it home here. Well, I mean, first of all, congratulations to SEL and, and Eki. Phenomenal series there. They did everything they needed to, and SEL really cementing himself kind of in the space and on this on, on a big stage at the IHF E World Championship. But got to give props to Regs for hanging in there and, and, and really giving him a game as in that game number four. But always one of my favorite tournaments to, to call, and a great job by, I want to say great job by hey, the guys of the IHF, uh, Nick in production, and, and is well... F5 and, and B Mage as well. You guys did a great job throughout this whole series and uh, happy that I could jump into the finals, but uh, phenomenal job all the way around, guys. We'll talk more in just a little bit, but let me send it up to you guys above me here. Get your thoughts and we'll get set up for some interviews. We'll have the winners and uh, Team Canada as well coming up in just a little bit. Guys, take it away. That we will is a major congratulations to Team Canada champions for the third straight time of the IIHF E-World Championship. Once again, a big thank you to our sponsors in Skoda and Strauss, everything that they've done to support this event over the years. And I mean, Grizz, just kind of looking at what we saw, I mean, much love to Canada, a great run to get here. But I mean, the story... Hard to ignore the performance from Yessi, a 15-goal advantage that he had, won 15-4 in that game one, and really, it was cruise control for Finland after that. And Finland needed it. I mean, let's not forget, Eki did lose the goal differential against Regs because of that last game. Things might have been different had he not had the lead. We'll never know. But certainly, Yessi, I mean, he did his part to claim this championship third straight for Eki with three different partners i mean it's just it's unbelievable what he's been able to do in dominating fashion in this tournament again maybe not his best outing as far as goal differential in the finals but it really cements why this is a team game a strategy game it's why this tournament is so different from any other tournament you'll see played yeah, and I mean, that's the, the thing with this tournament that I think makes it so unique and so special. There always is that team element that means so much, and I, I understand a lot of that attention being gravitated towards Eki, and how could it not be? He's won basically anything and everything on the 1v1 and 6 aside that you could possibly imagine, but... He's had that different teammate every single year. He's been able to win no matter what, but I feel like this is that one year to where it feels like if it's not Yessi, you really do question if this result is different. And Yessi is a guy that I think a lot of people in terms of the mainstream didn't really know about. I think everyone's going to know who Yessi is after today. Yeah, he had a lot of quality victories and kept series close when he needed to. Again, a, a true partnership in terms of what they were able to do. Obviously, Eki had his work cut out for him yesterday. We saw him erase that seven goal deficit. He needed seven, scored eight to punch his ticket to the finals. And then today, he was the one that needed a little bit of goal support from Yessi. And Yessi really just took it to Cad. I mean, Cad had no answers for behind the net. He gave up way too many breakaways as well. Yessi took advantage, never looked back. Yeah, and I, I think the thing, too, that you have to keep in mind is that this isn't a one-time thing for Yessi. I think that's what, to me, is most impressive about it. You go all the way back to the quarterfinals a couple weeks ago, and he had to go in and play Captain Dirty Dangler with Eki dropping that game, too. Things were really, really tight, and... Yes, he had to go in and take care of business against a guy in Captain Dirty Dangor that has come up clutch for his team for a couple of years now for Germany. 
He went in and won the first game four to three and won the second game four to nothing. So he is kind of proven to be that guy for Finland that has shown up with that clutch ability. And I think that for Finland, when you kind of go back and recap everything, that's the story. That clutch ability. Yessi doing it against Germany. Eki doing it yesterday against the U.S. And then Yessi doing it at the beginning of that series and really putting it away before things ever even got started. Yeah, absolutely. You can't say enough about this run. And both guys had to come up big at different times in this tournament. Quarterfinals, yes, he had to close it out with a shutout. Semifinals, it was Eki doing the unthinkable. And then here today, I mean, really unthinkable for Yessi to win in the fashion that he did win. Completely domination really made things easy for Eki, who, again, you know, regs gave it to Eki in that second game, made the goal differential swing in favor after Eki won game one in the dying seconds. So it was very important to have that goal differential going into that final game against regs that allowed Finland to really close this series out and take it for the third year in a row. Yeah, and I think looking back, we kind of talked about this a little bit during the pregame and going through the matchups and talking about each of our four players. We knew what we would get from Eki and Rex. We knew that that was going to be a close game. You figured they would probably more than likely split it just because that's just how these two are, right? They always go down to the wire. But... Yessi and Cad was kind of that wild card, and it feels like that is what made the difference here in this series, and that isn't discrediting anything that Eki did, but Yessi being able to win in the way that he did, it really set them up well. Yeah, I mentioned it before. I think we're ready for our interview from production. Is that correct? In a second. All right. So again, I mentioned prior to those matchups that wow. it's going to come down to, to Cad and Yessi, and it really did. Yeah, it came down the cat and Yessi, and he here we are with two of the Finnish players, champions of the 2023 IIHF E World Championship, Eki and Yessi joining us. Firstly, congratulations to you both. Uh, Eki, I'll start with you. Your third time winning this tournament representing Finland. I mean, how does it feel? Unbelievable. Uh, just, just unreal. I don't know. Like, kind of. It, 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 today was a very weird day for me. Like I felt like I could play pretty pressure pressure free. Uh, yes, I did an unbelievable job, like just outstanding. But yeah, feels great. So Yessie, I got a question for time... Yessi. Yeah, Can I swing ahead. it? So yeah. we'll do we'll do the every other here. Yeah. Uh, so Yessi, my man, again, kind of similar question. You come in playing next to Eki. Eki's obviously going to make things a little easier than most. But you had to do your job today. Because Eki was facing another really good player in regs. So for you, how does it feel knowing you helped and contributed to this win? Yeah, this is crazy feeling that I I managed to win this game. And yeah, this is absolutely crazy, crazy feeling. Well deserved. Congratulations, my man. I'll swing it back over to Brandon. Yeah, uh, Eki, kind of swinging it back to you here. After that adrenaline that you had yesterday, you didn't even know that the final was today. How were you able to reset and focus up knowing that you had a job to finish here with the final today? Well, actually, it was better that the final that the final was today because I play on, on a different console that I usually play. So I've been focusing on, on Xbox, uh, the, playing with the Xbox controller now, and just the games being the next day. It was just a, just a good thing for me. So this can be for either Eki or Yessi. It, it's such a team game. Um, I, so I don't really want to direct it to one or the other. I want to know between Eki and Yessi, Eki, you've been in this three times in a row, three different partners. Was there any advice given? Again, either of you guys can answer this. I want to know from a strategy perspective, did you guys talk to each other about the teams, about the strategy in game, all that good stuff? Yeah, every week we played a couple games with each other and uh, I talked a bit about the team we were playing with playing with for the week. But other than that, nothing much. I, I have big trust in Yes and uh, he knows what he's doing. O only thing we we were talking about mid-game is like, should we play more aggressive or stay the same or like a little bit, little bit stuff like that. And uh, just that uh, before, the, before every series, just like say that every series is long in every, any game anything can happen like even if things go things are going bad or things are going good just just keep it going don't give any any extra extra goals to the opponent cuz the cuz this diff tournament is so different with the goal difference it is absolutely insane brandon you got anything else for us my man 
Yeah, just a question for Yessi. You stepped up so many times in your first ever tournament in those big moments versus Germany last week and now today with that first game versus CAD. What was it for you that you felt like helped you be able to increase your level of play in those big moments? Uh, yeah, played very, very well t today uh, compared to yesterday's game. So I'm very, very happy that I, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. That feeling is crazy. Oh, just absolutely. Well, congratulations to you both. Uh, Anthony, you got anything else? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just ask Eki one more time. So what is it between you playing other top players that just pushes you guys to a different level? Obviously, th there was a pretty good chance that you guys were going to win going into game four. And you guys just always push each other to a different bar. Is there something different on the line, whether it's personal, anything like that, when you're playing against a, a player of caliber that Rex is? Well, first of all, I got to say I've played Rex so many times, or not too many times, but enough times to say that he's the best player I've ever played against. Like he's pretty, he's pretty nuts right now. Um, like, let's be honest, he had a bit of a team difference as well, like disadvantage compared to me. And he was like, I, I felt like I was struggling to keep up. He, he played outstanding. Uh, but yeah, even in the final game, obviously, I knew I don't really have to defend a 16 goal re lead, right? Uh, so yeah, I just like to try to play the last game as a normal game and just just try to try to win it in game one. Um, Couple lucky bounces in the end, I could say, what would be the game. So I, I wanted to win another one there. But yeah, couldn't happen this time. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. We're the, we're the world champions. World champions, and that's what matters. Three times in a row for you, Eki. Congratulations, my man, to both you and Yessi L. It has been awesome watching you guys compete today. Brandon, any, any closing thoughts for them? No, I, I think I'm good as well. Big congratulations to you both. Really well deserved. Eki, your third straight. Hope you enjoy this win once again. And Yessi, your first ever in your first tournament. Big congratulations to you both. Well deserved. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Big thanks to both Eki and Yessi for taking the time. We'll also have interviews on the Canadian side coming up in just a few minutes with Regs. And I, I mean, Grizz, we heard from both of them. Firstly, great interview from them both. But you can tell how much it means because in this tournament, you're not just winning for yourself, but being able to represent your country and your homeland as well. Such a cool thing that makes this thing so unique. Yeah, your, your country, your homeland, your partner as well. Things are always fun. Uh, more fun when you are able to win with a team when it, it really took a team effort. It's not like, you know, maybe previous years where Eki just did what Eki does and the other guy just didn't didn't even have to really think about it. We had to have a good showing from Yessi and we got that today. And it's why Finland are back to back to back world champions here in this tournament. Yeah, and I mean, I think Nick, he encapsulated it really well with that closing line that he used at the end of that game. Finland officially a dynasty now in this tournament. They won in 2020, they won in 2022, they won in 2023, didn't have a tournament in 2021. So they've won this tournament every single year that it has been held. And Eki has been a part of all of that and with different teammates. It's going to be really interesting because it feels like every year, everyone there was that one that was so close to knocking them off last year it was the u.s this year it was the u.s and you kind of had the feeling that maybe canada would be the toughest team that finland's had to play in a final in terms of a duo with cad and regs both with the history that they have and playing the way they have in this tournament they went in and aside from that game four they really kind of took control of the series from start to finish that they did and again i, I do want to give props to regs because regs was putting uh, a really impossible position and still found a way to compete as an underdog. Uh, it's what Regs does. He's an absolute class act. And so is Eki. I mean, every time we get the chance to interview Eki, it's just awesome. He's got nothing but respect for the other top players in this game. And at the same time, he knows what Yessi was able to do to help him win a third straight. Yeah, and you heard Eki say that Regs is the best opponent he's ever had to play up against. And we'll talk with the best opponent that Eki has ever played against in Regs, Canada's representative. Uh, firstly, Regs, thank you so much for taking the time, my man. Um, just kind of encapsulate what you felt throughout this finals. I know it was a little bit rough, but how was that process for you from start to finish? Uh, yeah, no, it was great. You know, um, 
you know, I, I just want to give a big thank you to Sam and and the effort he was able to put in. You know, I said it in Twitch chat, but, um, you know, in round robin stage, I, I lost the cookie in overtime and Sam was able able to beat the odds in regulation, which which gave us that top seed out of our group. So um, if that doesn't happen, we're playing Sweden in a quarters and Finland in a semi. So the opportunity to not even get here, um, I think, is a much greater possibility. So, um, yeah. Obviously, it's it's not the result we wanted today, but you know I'm I'm extremely proud of Sam, and I know Sam as a person, and, and um, I can honestly say that um, I know he gave his hundred percent effort today, and it just didn't go his way. So, did you hear what Eki had to say about you, and do you have a comment or reaction to what he was able to say, saying that you are the hardest player that he's ever had the fortune of playing against? No, um, you know, I, I really appreciate that. Um, I respect Eki a lot, both as a person and as a competitor. And, you know, um, you know, I, th- I think you alluded alluded to it a couple times in the broadcast that um, the, the matchup was personal. And it's not personal in the sense that we don't like each other. We don't respect each other. It's just I, I, I want to beat him really bad. And I know he wants to beat me really bad. So going into that final game, um, I had two perspectives of it. Either he's going to come out and play his best and try to beat me, or he respects me enough to try to play defense on a 16 goal lead when I've checked. So, um, yeah, no, either way, I, I wanted to, to give it a hundred percent effort and, um, I was able to do that and, and so, and sort of prove something not only to myself, but, um, to, to other people. Yeah, you certainly proved that. I know when talking with you over the last couple of weeks throughout this tournament, you said how you really wanted to see Canada make it to the mountaintop in this tournament. This being the one that has kind of eluded you and Canada in general have gone farther than you guys have ever gone. Does it feel a little bit better than it did in past years or does it sting a little bit more knowing that you were so close? If it stings, stings anymore. Um, we, we we knew we had uh, uh, an uphill battle today. Um you know, we, we knew it wasn't impossible, but we knew it was an uphill battle. And, um, yeah, no, really all, really all you could do is, is give a hundred percent effort. You know, um, we had to choose Canada last round because, you know, we didn't know if Sam would be able to play. We didn't know if I was going to have to make up a seven goal cushion. And we, we respected the Czech opponents enough to where I couldn't go Czech versus Czech. Um, so luckily we were able to get to this point and all, all, all you could ask for is to give yourselves a fighting chance and, and make it this far. And we were able to do that and you know secure a little bit of extra prize money which is always great but at the end of the day uh, we definitely wanted that world championship and unfortunately we weren't able to capture it so i got an interesting one for you where does your drive come from you know that you guys are down pretty heavily going into game four you're probably not coming out on top this time around but i mean you were feeling it in that game every goal you score you could see you know the fist bumps and the reactions you were into that game and you really wanted to win, where does that drive come from to put you on the top? Um, I just think that comes from my motivation to where um, I, I, I want to prove to my... So, like, I, I, everything I, I, I do, I, I want to give it 100% effort. Um, and, you know, regardless of where whatever the outcome is, if I know I give myself 100% effort, I could be proud of myself at the end of the day. And, yeah, no, it's just that motivation of proving that, you know, I, I could hang with the top players, you know, regardless of any team difference that I may have in front of me. So, um, yeah, no, there's definitely added motivation to, to not only prove to myself, but to prove to others that, you know, like, like, I mean, yeah, that like I, I could hang with these top guys. Yeah, personally, my last question for you, not sure if Chris is going to have one more, but looking back, your second year in this tournament, uh, I know you said last year that you really enjoyed it. What's kind of your thoughts after looking back on everything in terms of your experience participating once again? Yeah, you know, it's a super unique format. It's one I always enjoy. Um, you know, um, obviously, I, I, I'd agree that there's a few tweets to be made, but, you know, I, I love the team format. I, I love the team selection. Kind of sucks that Canada is so much better than the other teams. You know, I, I think the format would literally probably be the best format of any tournament we play if those teams were sort of closer knit. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's it's always a super um, incredible opportunity to partner up with um, someone you know very well in the community to try to achieve a goal and represent your country. Yeah, and you just touched on it a little bit. Uh, my my last question was going to be like, you know, what does it mean to be able to represent your country? Obviously, you're used to playing for more than yourself. You do represent Lazarus. You represent the Isles as well. You're kind of used to that. So I just wanted to know what it meant to play alongside another person as well as representing your country in this tournament. 
Yeah, no, it's great. You know, um, you know, I, 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 I love, I love, um, you know, help helping people and, you know, trying to achieve something w- with, with someone else is, is so much better than doing it um, by yourself. So yeah, no, I'm um, having that opportunity that the, this IHF tournament gives us each and every year is, is incredible. And, you know, um, yeah, no, they, they put lots, lots of hard work into it. You know, you see the engagement from all, from all these countries, teams like Hockey Canada, can't thank them enough for, you know, the, the promotion they gave myself and Sam throughout this event as well, as well as the IIHF and the promotion they gave us and, you know, the shouts and everything Um, that goes a long way. And, you know, it's something myself and Sam are super appreciative of. And yeah, no, um, it, it's a tournament I, I look forward to every year and I, Hopefully, look forward to being Canada's representative uh, again next year. But you know, it, that qualifying process is always a super tough mountain to climb with so many great Canadian players. Uh, but yeah, no, I'll definitely give this another shot. Hey, absolutely, Ben. And I can't speak for everyone, but me personally, would love to see you back. Congratulations again on a great season, getting that silver. Thanks so much for taking the time. Thank you, guys. All right, a big thank you to Regs is back into the studio. B Major, Grizzgold, and I mean, it's always so fun getting to talk to Regs. I know it may have not been the end result that he wanted, but nevertheless has to be really happy with the effort that he had, the way they represented Canada, and being able to make it to that final as well. I love interviewing Regs because he really has the, the hockey interview style nailed down to a T. Uh, absolute class act. We saw it yesterday with Cookie as well. Just some great, great personalities that this community has to offer. Um, I mentioned Eki as well. Anytime we get to interview him always has very well thought out responses too. Just this tournament brings so much more to the table that you really don't get to see anywhere else. Yeah, not just PR responses, but genuine responses. You mentioned two of the better personalities the community. We have two more with us. We're going to bring them back in with F5 Penguin Where? and No Sleeves before we wrap up. And you don't know what I'm talking about. You right there, my friend as well as the guy next to you, two of the best personalities in the community and in the business. And I mean, Nick, I'll start out with you and then we'll go over to Cam before we wrap up. Just kind of looking back on this tournament, what we saw today. I mean, what is your takeaway from all of this? You know, hindsight's always twenty twenty, and, and we can always go, okay, well, if I pick this team, then it could have been this way. But you have the circumstances that Cad, you know, wasn't sure if he could play to begin with. So we wouldn't even be having this conversation if they didn't make it to this point. So you have to give yourself the best chance. And that was a lot of respect to Czechia, uh, Team Czechia, uh, in the last round. So, you know, we had to do what we had to do to get here. The way the tournament works is the way it works. And if I'm looking at this from a thousand foot view, after Eki's hungry performance yesterday, I thought we'd see more of the same. But it turns out that the hero was what we saw in the quarterfinals with Yesiel. And I think if you're anybody in the global scene, you're looking at this kid going, oh man, this is somebody new that I have to really pay attention to because when it was on the line in three or four different games, he was the reason that Finland had such a demonstrative lead in different points through the tournament. I think you have to give a lot of credit to what he was able to do and that camaraderie of Eki, as we talked about in the interview, being communicative of what to expect in a series like this. Congratulations to Canada for making it this far. I know Regs is hungry for that championship, but congratulations to Eki for that trifecta that he was seeking out at the start of this tournament. No, oh, again, I, yeah, I want to I want to reiterate like I love this tournament. The format is just so good. Uh congrats again to Eki for taking home his third straight and uh, I I want to say uh, again the production you guys did a phenomenal job and uh as always and it's always a, it's always a blast here and, and shout out to Skoda and Strauss as well for for putting on the tournament yet again. Um one thing I want to say is yeah, everyone that uh, that did compete, it's always fun to see the storylines that come out and and how the things end up finishing and uh always always a fun one. I hope Hope if they bring it back next year, uh, we we continue to to grow the tournament because uh, it's been one of my favorites to to watch and, and be a part of all three years. Yeah, and then Grizz gonna slide over to you here. Any final thoughts? Any takeaways here after everything that we just saw throughout the tournament? Yeah, another fantastic ending. And every year it seems like there's someone that steps up and does something incredible. We saw a lot of that this season. I mean, even for Cookie to to blow the lead that he did blow. Let's give him a little respect for beating both Regs and Eki in individual games in this tournament. I think that is pretty impressive in its own right. Uh, former GWC champion, world champion in 2019, 
taking down the 2022 North American and European champion. So a lot of storylines come out of this tournament. Definitely want to thank the sponsors uh, for putting this thing on. I want to thank all you guys for being here, including me as well. Just as Cam alluded to, it's one of our favorite tournaments to be a part of every year. Uh, the last two years running, I believe Cam has been on all three years. So definitely want to uh, send you guys a shout out as well. You've been doing a fantastic job in the scene. Love where we're going with this. Yeah, always a great time to have you guys included in this. Enjoyed working with you guys last year. Was thrilled that you guys were able to come back in this year. Once again, a big congratulations to Finland. Three times straight champions of the IIHF E-World Championship. A big thank you to our amazing sponsors, Skoda and Strauss. Their amazing support behind this event over the last couple of years would not be possible without them. Cannot thank them enough. To everyone behind the scenes, there's, I mean, nine, ten plus people that are putting in work in this tournament both on the production side and on the organizational side that are pouring in hours and hours into this tournament every single year it's one of the best run one of the more entertaining ones that you will find and we would be remiss without mentioning them and all the work that they do bloody lp and sports gamer the cast that they did for both the german and finnish size the work that they put in to represent those countries on their coverage and then to you three as well for the work that you put in being on this cast nick the amazing job that you did with the production and all the players organizations and supporters that have come out so a major thank you to everyone for watching as we will wrap up the 2023 iihfe world championship once again a congratulations to finland your champions for the third straight time with eki and yes thank you all for watching and have a great night everybody